Right, all right, all right. We going live, y'all. Hope everybody's doing well. We try not to get too crazy tonight. Uh, <laughs> and some of you may or may not know, earlier I tried to go live. It was a bit of a hiccup. Things went horribly wrong. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I was trying to test everything, make sure everything was straight, but uh, some folks joined in. Hopefully they came back to enjoy the live. Uh, give a quick shout out to Rochelle J. Thank you very much for the super chat. Please smash that like button as soon as possible. Boost James. Hi, James. Hi, yourself back. What's up? What's up? Thank you very much for the support. I want to thank everybody. Before we get started, I want to thank everybody for uh, taking time out to watch my videos, listen to me rant into this camera. You know, and it's nice always to feel like you're not alone when you're watching the sister wives foolishness <laughs> that happens and you sitting there cussing to yourself like, I can't believe these people are doing this. Why are they acting like this? Can't nobody tell the truth? Don't they have friends? Isn't somebody gonna tell them that this is not appropriate? <laughs> So I just want to make sure that everybody is straight. Before we get started, let me just check through. Hey to Nicole I, and also the uh, Rad Live Girl. Thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, before we get started, just want to make sure that my levels are okay, that you guys are hearing me all right. If I'm coming off okay, just give me with a one in the chat so that that way I can be sure that I sound okay and you guys are getting everything the right way. Uh, before we get started, uh, as mentioned, thanks Lizzie B. Hit that like button, hit that like button. Get those likes up so that that way everybody knows what's going on. <laughs> All right. Um, is it? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, off rip, I want to say this. When I was watching the Sister Wives content this entire time, thank you guys for hitting the ones. Let me know. Um, I'll say that thus far in the season... I've been okay with them kind of retreading a lot of the old, uh, worn out ground. I've been okay with them kind of going back and us taking kind of a step back into the uh, past. Uh, big shout out to Sarcasm for Fun. Love the name. From Suffolk, New York. Oh man, Suffolk. Okay. So excited. You are live. I'm excited to be here. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to point out while I'm watching this show is that I'm okay with them going back and us getting some content and some context as far as some of the struggles that were going on and happening as far as the show was concerned. Uh, big shout out to Rad Lip Girl. Okay, with the super chat. I see you with the super chat. But the way things are now and the way they're doing stuff now, it's a little hard to watch. Just because it seems like they're running, and literally, I counted it during this last episode, they literally ran the same clip telling the same story about two or three different ways throughout the course of the episode. Now, I'm not saying that TLC is dropping the ball when it comes to the editing process, but folks, TLC is dropping the ball when it comes to the editing process. Like, they're not respecting the viewer's time in watching the show. And as much as I don't mind one season of us kind of getting back into the whole what's happening, what's going on, uh, what's happening with Christine and how she broke away from the family, what happened with Janelle and how she broke away from the family, what happened with Mary and how she broke away from the family, uh, people, we all know that they're no longer together. And when they started rolling out the McKelty's Got Twin stuff, Come on, man. What are we doing? We knew that McKelty had twins, and they revealed it like it was a surprise. Oh, you're having twins? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, she had those twins now for like a year, two years. <laughs> so we're all set. We're all caught up on that part of it. And it, it just seems like, to me, they're dragging this out because they're trying to get the most of it because, as some of us may or may not know, the uh, Sister Wives franchise has hit like a huge boost as far as, oh, big shout out to Mercedes. I'm a little bit behind. Mercedes Cheyenne with the super chat, as well as uh, Cheryl Williams. Thank you guys so much. I missed one. I apologize. Big shout out to Catherine L uh, from South Florida. Holla. But as some of us may or may not realize, when they're doing this, they're having a huge boon as far as 
uh, the viewership and the number of people who are watching the show and getting into the show, what I'm concerned about is that they think that this is enough. You have to present new ideas, new concepts, what's going on. You catch us up to where they are now. Like, I don't want to see Christine get married two years from now. And, it, <laughs> and then ironically enough, Janelle gets married and Mary, you know, gets married or has like three, four boyfriends and then gets a divorce. Like, nobody wants to see that. So if we either we're in on the reality part of the show and they're going to build it out and then we're kind of watching their lives unfurl or... We're just in the review portion of the show where things happen and we get to pretend like we're in on what's happening with their lives. But either way, they need to catch up for it. Oh, James with a tell-all. Thanks very much for uh, sarcasm for fun. Uh, they'll never let me host this tell-all. <laughs> they'll never let me host a tell-all. They're not going to put me on the stage with Cody Brown because he's going to get mad that I'm asking questions and I'm going to keep asking the questions. <laughs> So, so I'm not going to do the whole, uh, I'm going to ask you a hard question. And then all of a sudden <laughs> he turns around and starts growling because I'll growl back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Answer my question. <laughs> oh, big shout out to, uh, Torchwood gal, $2 super chat. Cody and Robin need those money for the McMansion. Yeah, they do. They got like four or five uh, mortgages on that house. So they need as much money as they could possibly get so that they can sustain the mansion. <laughs> we can't stand watching what Robin with her whining and pretending she doesn't know what's going on. This is so true. And that's most of, and that's the crazy part about it is that as we go through some of the, uh, the stuff that I pulled for this particular live, one of the things that really strikes me is how Robin and Cody constantly pretend that they have no idea what's going on. They pretend like, oh, okay, yeah, this is happening, and this is happening in my family. I'm so involved. I care about them so much, but I have no clue as to why they're acting the way they are or what's going on. I have no idea why they're doing this. <laughs> what's happening to my life? Participate in your life. That, that's as simple as that. So... One of the first things that I wanted to talk about with regard to these uh, sister wives was to bring a copy of the contract sign before asking them a tough question. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's right. Bringing the contract. So that's one of the things, before we get into that, one of the side checks, like, because I, I, I get that a lot. You should do the tell-alls. And the reason why I say they won't let me do the tell-all is because they have babied and pampered Cody so far along the line as far as the tell-alls are concerned that they'll never have somebody who gets in there and asks the hard question. Or, or more to the point, even a, no, forget a hard question, just a simple follow-up question. Like you're going to accuse Christine of doing all these horrible things. And as... You know, Suki kind of did in that last tell-all where, Rob, you know, Christine came in. She's a game player. She's a trickster. She's a huckster. She's been fooling everybody. And then <laughs> Suki said, so uh, he, she tricked you? Oh, uh, no, no, because I'm too smart to get tricked by somebody so silly. Because that's the whole thing with the way that they try to do Christine. They try to pretend like she's a stupid person and she's childish and immature. And then at the same time, she's supposed to be this mastermind who's controlling all the little kids and all, all the adult children and all the other adults around her. And to be honest with you, even of the four wives, Janelle is probably one of the more intelligent wives, if not the most intelligent wife of the four. Not even, are you in trouble? If that was the case, you're in trouble. Now, the thing I will say about Christine is I don't think that Christine is half or nearly as slow as everybody thinks she is. Like, because when they were talking about moving to Arizona, my belief has always been that when they were sitting there in Las Vegas and Christine had finally put a house in her name, this is, I think, because ultimately, I think that was one of the first houses Christine owned too. They kept focusing on Robin, but I think that was Christine's first house too. And when they put that house in her name, homegirl looked at that and said, you want me to move to Arizona <laughs> with you, you clowns? And, and live in one house and we get to stare at each other? 
yeah, we're going to have to put a house, another house in my name or I'm staying right here where I'm at. And I'm okay with staying here in Vegas because she was okay. At the time, she was okay with staying in Vegas. She was fine with it. So I'm pretty sure she put, you know, foot to ass and told him, like, basically, I'm not moving to Arizona unless I have my name on a house deed, period, point blank, the end. Cody thinking that Christine was a stupid person and thought he had control over her agreed to let her purchase a home because he thought that that was basically his house. And you can even tell that by the way he carried it out when they were talking, when she was talking about moving, that was his house. I don't understand how you're going to sell my house. This is my house. I have attachments to this house. I mean, uh, Christine, <laughs> right? So you have that part of it. Now I will say this, had you switched around some of the characters a little bit, if you were to put Janelle in a situation where she owned that house in Arizona and she had said, or she owned the house in Vegas and she said, I'm not selling my house in Vegas unless I purchase a home in Arizona. There is no way in the world Cody would have allowed her to take his name up off that property. Period. There's no way Cody would have did that because he would have thought that Janelle would be the one who was capable of walking away and then taking her house with her. So, Janelle was folded into the family. She was just giving her money to the family because on the hopes and dream that they were going to build a house out there on Coyote Pass, he thought he had control of Christine, so he let Christine take her house, and you could put your name on your house. Then Christine did the old switch old change up. Oh, guess what? I'm not moving out to Coyote Pass, and I'm taking my property. Sorry, bro. <laughs> and she took her property and left. Took her ball and went home. Good for her, right? And so kind of where we are now with this particular episode, we're watching Mary and how Mary is uh, kind of conducting herself in this marriage. Now, as I had said earlier on, <laughs> I'm the only channel that her husband will watch with her. <laughs> uh, tell him I say what's up, Miss Bueller. I think your name is Bueller. I apologize if I screwed that up. <laughs> but the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm catching these random. I, I apologize if I'm not getting everybody, but when push comes down to shove, when I watch this episode and I see what's going on with Mary, as I said earlier, I'm not a huge Mary fan and I'm not going to pretend that I am. All right. I'm not a huge Mary fan. I sympathize with her situation because I think Mary, like so many of the wives are pretty much victimized by the system that they grew up in. Not only the religion, the belief system, but the family culture, the family dynamic, the dynamics of their interpersonal relationships, possibly with their parents. So I think that they've been kind of uh, lulled into this sense of security with these types of marriages. That being said, I also think that there is a point where if, so, if a man tells you no, or if somebody tells you no, no means no. And this doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't have the definition of like women saying no to men. If a man say no to a woman or a woman say no to a man, a man to a man, a woman to a woman, I'm not interested in you. You not my style. That should be it. Now I understand that when you're married to somebody and you build your life around that person, yeah, you have certain expectations. And I think that it's not unfair for you to be hurt, for you to be angry, for you to feel a certain kind of way. If that person doesn't want to continue that relationship, absolutely you have the right to feel a certain kind of way. Be pissed. Especially if you help this man to build a life that he enjoys currently, then he wants to take that life and go share it with somebody else. Then yeah, you have every right to be pissed. What you don't have a right to do is to demand that he be with you when he doesn't want to be with you. And I would even say that mentality is transferable to Cody when he's talking about Christine. Because we could the same arguments that uh, Mary could make as to why Cody should stay with her and why he can't leave is the exact same argument that Christine could make or he can make about Christine when she left him. 
Oh, you promised that this was going to be forever. You promised that we would eternally be together. You promised that we would love one another till the end of time. You understood and we had an agreement that I could take in other wives when we got married. You knew that was part of the deal. Now you want to change the deal. The deal is at any time you get to renegotiate your deal. I'm sorry. I'm shaking the table. I probably look like I'm in an earthquake. <laughs> but the problem is, is that... When you make these kind of deals, you have to understand what you're agreeing to. And this is part of the reason why I'm such a proponent for people not settling for relationships or being so wrapped up with trying to get to somebody that you're willing to settle for the relationship that you have. Because you wind up agreeing to a whole bunch, of, and I'm going to curse now, you're going to wind up agreeing to a whole bunch of bullshit that you never want to agree to, that you never have any intention of agreeing to, and none of the stuff that you want to do. She like I can look at Mary, and the way she looked at Cody when they were at their uh, wedding thing, the video that they had, Mary was in love with Cody, hands down. She was infatuated with this man. She loved the hell out of Cody. And you could tell by the way she looked at him. And Cody was looking at her a certain kind of way, and the two of them, they look like a lovely couple. The problem is when you start adding other people into your relationship, and I say this, whether it's a polygamous relationship, I'll say this, if it's a, 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 a polyamorous relationship, I say this, if it's an open relationship, you know, how many guys, you know, say, oh, my dream and my fantasy is to have more than one woman, two women at the same time, bro. You know how much, it's, you know how hard it is to deal with one woman? <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it is to deal with one person and you're going to add another person. So you're not just at, you're not just adding just another person's sexuality. <laughs> you're adding another person's problems. You add another person's issues, their insecurities, their uh, shortcomings, the things that make them who they are as people. You're adding that in the personality dynamics, their hopes, dreams, ambitions, things that they want to accomplish for themselves. All that gets swept into the whole thing. And then here you go talking about, yeah, man, it's going to be amazing. You know, one sword per bed. <laughs> it ought to be one pistol per bed because you're going to wind up playing a pistol flute before it's all over. You're going to, because it'll drive you insane. It'll drive you nuts. And it, Janelle is a wonderful person. I think he was in love with Mary. Christine is a wonderful person, but when you put them all in a bag and shake them up and you try to conduct your life with them, it might be too much. <laughs> it might be too much to handle. So I think that when I watch this, I think that one of Mary's bigger mistakes was the fact that she agreed to something that she didn't necessarily agree with. Because even early on, as they talked about it, he said that uh, Mary... Uh, would always kind of block uh, Janelle from showing affection and she would kind of always be pawing and clawing at Cody to try to get his attention and show affection to him. And that's part of the reason why Janelle would kind of drift off and wouldn't show a lot of the PDAs because she was trying to keep everything separate because, you know, <laughs> Mary always had a hand in his pocket. <laughs> and then when you, you know, not in his pocket, meaning his wallet either. <laughs> but then comes Christine and that becomes another distraction. And if she's not excited about Janelle, she's most certainly not excited about Christine who is sexually attracted and attracted to Cody and wants to be a part of Cody's situation. And she doesn't feel comfortable watching Cody be, uh, <coughs> excuse me, romantic with these other people. So, you have that as well. And then, of course, later on, when you put Robin in the mix. And I, you know, and the sad part is, is that ultimately, I don't think, yeah, Robin has aged horribly with Cody 24-7. Yes, she has. <laughs> it's all that weight. Because there's a point I want to make about Robin. When Robin comes into the marriage, I had said during my last video that Robin is Cody's soulmate. That the two of them together, Robin is the woman that Cody has always wanted. When Cody envisioned himself being a polygamist, I think Robin is the woman that he envisioned himself being with. And I specifically said that Robin is Cody's soulmate. What I did not say 
if you notice, is that Cody is Robin's soulmate. Because I don't think that that's the case. I think that what happens is, I think Robin is allowed to be the person that she is because she spends time with uh, Cody and then Cody goes off to another wife. And I think that that's like, because it was so weird to me when I try to piece together why Robin is so pressed about other women being in uh, Cody's life. Why is she so pressed about these other people being around? And I think the reason why isn't just the money because she does enjoy the money that the other wives bring into the family. She does enjoy that aspect of it. But she also enjoys the vacation and the break that she gets. Because when she sends Cody off to go spend the night with Janelle, she know he's not messing around with Janelle because he's he's all about Robin. When he, especially he send, she sent him off to go lay up with Mary, they'll sit up all night playing Scrabble up a cheesy. You know what I mean? They're more likely to hit some dominoes than he is to hit them bed sheets. So she's not worried about that part of it. But what she does get by sending <laughs> by sending uh Robin off or, or Mary uh, Cody off to go stay at Mary's house is she gets a break. She gets a chance to recharge her batteries. You know how hard it is to pretend to be somebody you're not? <laughs> like, and that's what I think it comes down to. You know how hard it is for you to sit there day after day and pretend to be the pencil box here, right? <laughs> to, to sit there and, and every day you trying to be somebody that you're not naturally, but you're, you're keeping this facade going. And now that Cody is staying at the house, she's having to do that 24 seven. When Cody was talking about coming over before and she would criticize the other wives, what would she say? Oh, these wives have him come over and he doesn't, you know, he, they're not treating him like the best customer. He comes over to my house, everything stops and I give all attention to him. Now Cody is getting all that attention. He's, you know, these, Robin's not presenting him with any problems, any trouble or anything else. And he comes over to the house and Robin's there, you know, she pulled full pencil block box in display. She hitting the foot deluxe tricks, you know what I mean? She's swinging off the fan, diving off the dresser. She's doing all kinds of tricks for this dude. Acrobatics out the world. And then by the time he gets done messing around with her, what happens? <laughs> he got to go back over to Christine's house, or Janelle's house, or Mary's house, and he got to listen to all kinds of problems and bills and, and issues with the kids. And these women have actual issues and problems that they talk to Cody about. Whereas with Robin, he goes over and she doesn't talk to him about none of this stuff. And he, he enjoys that. He enjoys the vacation. He wants to stay on vacation. And part of the problem I think that they're really having now when they talk about we're having some difficulties and we're having some issues is the idea that when he gets over to the house now, now all of a sudden Robin's like, okay, well, if you're going to be here, here are the problems. If you're going to be here, you take care, help me take care of these kids. Normally, he come over to the house and she do the kids by herself, by herself. And he just gets to sit in his room and pre play, play computer, a businessman. You know what I mean? Everybody's playing, faking a role. <laughs> yeah, I'm a businessman. <laughs> he gets a little briefcase. Okay. Got something from uh, Deborah Tanner. Thank you very much for the super chat. I see you, girl. <laughs> Who is this? Robin lived in a different state. Knew the family. Yeah, she did. Had a show contract. Yeah, she scammed them. I and I totally agree with that. What's going on, Lane? How? Yeah, what's up, girl? Well, push them down and shove. I totally agree with that. Robin knew this was coming down, so it wasn't a trick. It wasn't a a thing where they just happened to meet. You know, it's kind of weird. Like you just happen to hit the lottery, and all of a sudden you meet the girl of your dreams, or you just happen to get that NBA basketball contract or the NFL football contract, and just so happen to run into this girl at the supermarket who likes everything you like. Yeah, no, you got set up, bro. <laughs> and that's one of the things I would say to Cody. I would pull him aside. If Cody was my friend, I would pull Cody aside. Me and Cody probably couldn't be friends, though. In fairness, like I, I couldn't take him. Like he, he, he's, too, he's rough. But if if I had a guy like Cody, in Cody's situation, we'll say that. If I had a guy who was in Cody's situation and I saw what was going on, I would pull his coattails. Because the way Robin is setting him up, and we'll get into the uh, whole thing with Mary in a little bit. I'm sorry, I kind of took you guys for a ride a little bit. Long stroking it. But the whole thing with uh, Robin, 
I would call Cody aside and say, look, the way she's going and the stuff she's describing and the way she's saying things, bruh, she is setting you up. Robin is about to set Cody up. Cody about to take a fall. And he thinks that Christine did him dirty when she left. No, my brother. No, my sisters. When Robin leave, Robin is taking my man under. She taking his shirt. <laughs> She's taking his shoes. She's, ta she gonna, she's taking my man under. There's no way in the world. Because if you think about the way things are coming off, when she does her testimonial, what are some of the things that she said thus far? I had no idea that there were all these problems. I had no idea what Cody was doing. And she sits there and tries to play naive about everything. And then she's now in the recent years, she's been running out this, or the recent, uh, I guess, last two, three uh, seasons. She's been running out the whole idea that, <laughs> say that for those in the back, oh, holla at your boy. But uh, she's been running out the whole idea of, oh, Cody is being nasty. Cody is being angry. Cody's being aggressive. Bruh, it's just around the corner before she starts using the abusive word. And she'll cite the craziest part about the whole thing, miss. I don't see any deal breakers. When she starts calling it out and saying that the reason why I'm breaking up with him is because he's being abusive, she's going to cite Janelle, she's going to cite Christine, and she's going to cite them kids as examples of how nasty he's been and how nasty he's become and how abusive he's become and why she needs to be able to call him back. I'm telling you, watch. Watch it. <laughs> watch it. I'm telling you, it's coming. Homeboy is in so much trouble with her. Because once that show, like that show falls off and that show goes away, he's going to get divorce papers. Speaking of the show, here's a little ditty about, here's a little ditty about Jack and Diane. <laughs> here's a little ditty about uh, Robin and Mary. What are my thoughts on that? Robin and Mary, why does Robin so pressed about keeping Mary around? I think Robin is pressed about keeping Mary around for the show. Point blank, period, the end. Robin likes to keep Mary around because of the show. Because if you look at how things work out, the only time she shows up over there to uh, to Robin's house, big shout out to uh, Becca De Marquez with the uh, five dollar rain, I think. Well, I was one to three left from two thousand one two and twenty three. <laughs> I'm sitting waiting for twenty four. Love the channel. Happy to see you live. Thank you. I'm happy for being live. <laughs> <laughs> she said that Lord. You got a wife a year, losing every wife every year. <laughs> That's just terrible averages. Big shout out to uh, Brash Yeti with the five dollar super chat. You're the best, James. Your take is always spot on. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. And I appreciate everybody participating too. But the reason why I say, you know, poor Robin, I like that too. From uh Brooke Lopez. The reason why I say that is because she has to have somebody to sit on the porch and talk to. One, two, she has to make sure that if Mary's not around, what are we going to have? Let us let me ask you guys a quick question. What do you know? Big shout out to Rick Ashty, <laughs> Navert, <laughs> with the $5 Super Chat. Do you think, or 499 Super Chat, do you think Robin will dump him if the OG3 get a spinoff ASAP? She can claim he has changed and she gets to be an abusive X2. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When push him down and shove... How much do you really know about Cody and Robin's relationship? Nothing. Because they don't talk about themselves at all. The only thing Robin and Cody do is sit there and talk about everybody else. And how everybody else is talking shit about them. That's 90% of Robin and Cody's confessional. Oh, I'm tired of everybody talking shit about me. Now listen to me talk shit about everybody else. Let me tell you about Christine. <laughs> That's that's ninety percent of their conversation. Without Mary, what is she going to sit there and talk to Cody about the other wives? <clears throat> she going to talk to Cody about the other kids? That's going to look terrible. Like the outlook looks horrible for that. So there's no way that she's going to be able to do that. So they don't have an outlet for a show because they don't want to reveal anything about themselves other than what's going on with the wives and their relationship with the other wives and the other kids and the struggles that they're having. And the whole time Robin's been on this show, 
I gotta tell you that one of the things that's kind of pissing me off on a uh, on a on a low key pissing me off is Robin consistently sitting there acting like she's a victim, sitting there acting like everything that's happened is not on her and she had nothing to do with it. Big shout out to Be Betty Jabay Bay. <laughs> <laughs> the 1399 super chat love you baby but it's just one of them things that kills me every time i see it she always wants to sit there and cry and complain about what's going on in her life and everything is her fault but then they all turn around in the next breath and say i'm not a victim no what you're not a victim as you sit here and complain about being a victim is it just me am i the crazy one like I said, they don't. There's no outlook, and there's no pos. I'm shaking the table. I'm sorry. There's no possibility they could have a show because I don't know what they would have a show about. Christine and Janelle could have a show because they could talk about their lives moving on. Technically, Mary could have a show because she could have the Life After Polygamy spinoff show too, where she's in Padawan and she's friends with this woman and she's going out on dates and trying to find men and she should go out on dates and try to find somebody else. I'm To be honest with you, I'm at the point where I, I don't like the idea that she's sitting there trying to force somebody to date her or guilt somebody in a dater, never do that shit. Never do that. And never have a man tell you more than once that he don't want you. Because if he got, every time a man gets close to, and this is just from a guy's perspective, if a guy tells you that he don't want you, and he keeps telling you that he don't want you, every time he tells you after the first, maybe two, three times he says it, it's going to just start getting progressively nastier and more aggressive. And it's just going to be jacked up. Before it's all over, he's going to be saying all kinds of wild shit to you that you don't want to hear and that you don't deserve to hear. Oh, the HBO special. That's right. Don't forget the HBO special. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Holla at your boy. <laughs> but if don't ever make a man tell you more than once. And that's all we're watching now is that when Cody is talking to uh, Mary and he's telling her that, because he's been telling her for years now, I don't want you, I don't want you. We ain't getting back together. Forget it. I'm waiting for you. I'm not coming. Like, I don't know. How, <laughs> if, a, if I was in a car with a woman that I was attracted to and I'd be, baby, I just want to let you know <sighs> that I'm waiting for you. And she looks me in the face and says, but I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> it give you the the run for the hills eyes like come on man like you, it's time to go all right fine i don't know how many times you have to humiliate yourself and that's the whole point too like you don't have to keep humiliating yourself i'm tired of watching this woman and again I, i'm not a huge mary fan and i'm not i'm not uh i'm not apologetic about it i'm not a huge mary fan mary, mary's not my type of people but at the same time I don't like to see anybody get mistreated. I don't like to see anybody in a bad situation. And in this particular case, Mary finds herself in a bad situation. And I'm not even saying I hate Mary. I don't like her. I, I just don't like some of the aspects of her personality. It just rubs me the wrong way. But she doesn't deserve this. And if you help to build a guy up and you recognize your value to the relationship, then you don't let this dude devalue you or tell you that you're worthless or that you got to sit around and settle for the scraps that he's willing to give you because he's willing to just, you know, knock what off every time he got off the table. Before we get too far into it, let's get into, uh, let's, let me take a look at some of these. Oh, so happy I'm live. Thanks. Z San. Everyone says, <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, less. And 1,002. <laughs> Who will Robin puss with if she leaves Cody? But that's the question. Mm. Mm. At the same time, I would just say, you know, as a, uh, as a card carrying member of the male populace, that, you know, sometimes it ain't worth it. Like, because, you know, what you get with the, uh, the sexual experience, you know, that it might be wonderful. You know, for some guys, three, four minutes of their life. <laughs> one hit of quitters. But, but, you know, whether it's, you know, one pump chump or all night long, 
You know, it doesn't make a difference if you, at some point, you will have to have a conversation with her. You know, that's that's just how I see it. Like when I talk to my son about stuff like this, that's you know, I don't talk to him like son. <laughs> One punk chump, dude. Like, no, nah, I don't have that conversation specifically. But what I do tell my son is that when you are trying to find people to date and people to go out with and people to spend time with, find people that you enjoy spending time with them. And then everything else will kind of fall into place. Like the whole sexuality stuff is overplayed. It's a very Western mentality that, you know, idea that we have as far as sexuality is concerned, where all of a sudden you're just going to run run into these women, knock them off, and it's going to be such an amazing experience that it'll change your life and make everything else in your life perfect. Like, I don't care what you're packing. As a dude, you could have the biggest Johnson in the world. You could be stirring soup with that bad boy. But at the end of the day, if you don't have a personality to go with it, then that appendage doesn't mean shit. If, you, if you're a woman walking around with the golden cooch and... You know, you don't have a personality. You don't have the knowledge, intellect, and mindset to be able to move a family forward or move a relationship forward. Then it doesn't make a difference what you rocking with down below. It doesn't make a difference. Because when push comes down to shove, as somebody, okay, thank you very much, Rochelle J. Oh, yes, because I turned a Patreon channel. I was actually thinking about doing that. Great. Thank you for the uh, suggestion, though. Thank you very much for that. And thanks for the super chat. You look out for that because I will be running that. And we'll be doing some smaller stuff and maybe answering some questions and all that. But the, the whole thing is, is that when you, if you reduce yourself down to your sexuality and one of the more distraction things, and I'll even talk about it when I start doing 90 day re fiance reviews, because now I'm up on live, I'll probably be rolling out a lot more on different shows especially but when i when i talk about like 90 day fiance 90 percent of 90 day fiance the milf manner which is disgusting but that all came down to um i got this kind of skill or that kind of skill in the bedroom and that doesn't mean shit like <laughs> okay fine you can knock bottoms out if you understand basic biology and you have a sense of rhythm you can do most things and pleasure most people on a physical level it's not, it's not a crazy difficult thing to do. Like you just have to, you know, you have to be a caring concern and a compassionate person, have a little bit of empathy and understand where your, your vibration is. It's fantastic. You can, you can pleasure people. The best experiences you'll have though, is if you can have more of a connection and a physical connection. And I think that that's where kind of Cody is with Robin, not necessarily Robin with Cody, but Cody is with Robin because Rob, Cody is getting more of that, uh, beyond physical connection because Robin is pretending to be the type of woman providing that fantasy. She's almost like a stripper in, in some regards because she's providing a fantasy to him. Like she's like the, the perfect wife or the, in the, in the case of like the stripper, where you go to the fantasy, it's a fantasy. So she's basically the perfect girlfriend. You know, she does everything. She pays attention to you. She gives you all the attention in the world. As long as you still got money, <laughs> <laughs> she'll keep giving you the great service but the second you run out of money <laughs> you she run out of honey you know and that's just the way it goes and, I, and that's what i'm saying like it's not and it's not even a real big disrespect to robin but at the end of the day if cody is only focused on that one thing then he won't be able to progress in that relationship if robin is only good for that one thing then you can be replaced and that's why it's so important, is especially when I when I talk to uh, the young people I'm involved with. That's why it's so important that you try to make sure that you are beyond just the sexuality part of it. One of the more distracting things, especially when you talk, Robin is just dirty. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Uh, can't show his love so gross. Okay, uh, one of the things that bothers me so much when I talk to uh, young folks is especially as a younger guy when i was a younger guy you would always run i would well i don't say you would but i would always run into young ladies who would you know say things that are sexually pro provocative to try to get attention so they would offer you know uh 
special attention or talk about how they like this or they like that or or you know they're into this or they're super cool super chill they you know they, they, they don't care if you have other girlfriends or whatever the case may be and it's all done in a way to try to make ingratiate you to start try to find them attractive but that doesn't necessarily work that'll get attention for sure walking around with tight outfits small outfits no outfits will get attention but what do you do once you have that attention? What do you do? Where do you go from there? And that's where I want, like, uh, even when I, like I said, when I talk to my young people, when I tell them, like, okay, fine, you go up to a young lady and you give her the one liner or the opening line or the pickup line, hey, you, you know, did it hurt when you fell out of heaven or whatever the stupid shit you say. And then all of a sudden she, you get her attention. She laughs and she says, okay, what do you have now? And that's all you got. And you jump right in the, well, you know, I have this or I can do that for you. You turn them right off and they go away. In Cody's case, you know, in Robin's case, if that's all she's focused on is just that one thing and tricking them out that one way, what happens when you start to get older? When he starts to slow down sexually? When you actually have to have a conversation? What happens when you have to talk about where you're going to live and what you're going to do? Your hopes and your dreams and your aspirations. It becomes a problem. But before we get into all that, let's take a look at what we came to look for. We're going to look at some of this uh, craziness that I pulled, some of the clips I pulled. This first clip is talking about the anniversary. We're going to have the anniversary, y'all. <laughs> and keep in mind, these people have been together for 30 years. <laughs> 30 years. And this is from the uh, last episode where... Mary has to call up Cody and express that, hey, happy anniversary. And Cody, like, what the hell are you calling me for? Let's take a look. He didn't actually call me or text me um, midway through the day. I thought, oh, maybe I should just call him. And so I did. I called him. I'm like, hey. And he's like, hey. And I said, happy anniversary. And he's like, oh, happy anniversary. <laughs> I'm like, we should go out on a drive or go to dinner or something. What do you think? You know, he's like, mm, I'm watching the kids. Let me check with Robin. <laughs> and right there, the whole point is I'm watching the kids. Let me check with Robin. In other words, he 100% and this is I, and some people get offended when I say this. He treats them like they side chick. This is side chick. This is side chick conversation. Y'all. You're a married man and a woman call you up and say, hey, let's go out for a drive or go get something to eat or something. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll throw you a shot, you know, here and now. Take this, put it in your pocket, <laughs> right? And you tell us some old stuff about, look, uh, I'm watching the kids right now. And let me get back to you. In other words, woman, I'm here with my family. That's basically what he was telling her. I'm here with my family. Stop calling me. I'm here with my family. I'd rather sit here and spend time with my family. And this is the one part where I watched this episode and I was not happy with Mary. Because Mary, yo, bump you for making me do this. But for once, I have to say that Cody was right. Cody, for once, for once, Cody said, let me take care of my kids. I'm sitting here spending time, quality time with my kids. Let me spend quality time with my kids. Now, here's what I wish. I wish that Cody saw this, had this same mentality for all his children. I wish that he took the same concern and same level of care for all of his children where he said, you know what? Let me spend time with my family. I'm not going to be doing no dumb shit. I'm not going to be chasing this one or chasing that one. I'm not going to try to go out and create a whole bunch of problems. I just want to sit here one minute and enjoy my children. I wish he did that with all his kids, honestly. Not just the two we have with Robin and, the, and her three. I wish he did that with all his kids. So for that, bravo, Cody. Keep up the good work. Let's try to span it out a little more. And maybe you would have a better relationship with your other children. Right? And so that's one of the things that bothered me about that whole conversation. If you have to call somebody up and you have to remind them about, <laughs> about a 30-year anniversary, 
then it didn't mean anything to him to start. And that's also kind of one of the things, I, I hope I got the clip here because I have a bunch of clips that I pulled because, you know, James bring them receipts. And I'm going to have my sound effects. I got to set that board up. So, you know, I'm going to have the sound effects ripping too. So, we plan on boosting the uh, product production on this as well. This is my first one. Hopefully, it's coming off okay. You guys are enjoying yourselves and you're liking what I'm doing. But it's going to get better. It will get better. I was telling my uh, daughter earlier, you know, sometimes you just got to start. And that's where I'm at now. Like, because I had plans and I had a bunch of stuff, lost the computer I had before that I was going to have like all kinds of fancy this and fancy that. And the computer went down like a mother after somebody hit a damn uh, pole or something around the corner and, and lost my computer and everything, all the stuff I put up. So I had to start from scratch, but guess what? I'm here now, and I appreciate you guys coming and checking me out. And we're going to roll on to the next clip. Now, the next clip, like I said, one of the things that bothers me is that he has been telling her that he don't want to. He's been telling her, I don't want you. And that's a problem. When he, because it's getting nastier. <laughs> Where's the nanny? That's all. I didn't see who wrote it though. <laughs> the nanny apparently is off. Cody is the nanny. Maybe money getting tight because Janelle talking about leaving. <laughs> and so when Janelle pulled up steak, all of a sudden the money coming up short. So the nanny had to take a couple days off. And Cody getting put to work. That would also explain why Cody's so nasty to marry because now all of a sudden he's actually doing these kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh man shout out to uh what is this Valise ramirez i apologize if i blew your name let me know give me a one if i hit your name right thank you for what you do i just know your viewers learn a lot from your perspective what is your occupation okay y'all trying to figure out what a play and do all right i have a varied past i have a very uh occupational history i've done everything from college on big shout out to nj kathy thank you very much for the super chat all right so what do i do my last profession i am considered right now my w-2s i'm an entertainer i have uh worked professionally as an actor i have been on tv shows some of you have caught me on various shows and movies <laughs> so not even to be a dick that way but before that, I was working in corporations. I did the whole nine to five uh, white collar thing, showing up every day, working in litigation and all that. So I have a varied past. And before that, I did uh, some different things. And I'll, I'll get into a Patreon. You guys don't want to be bored by my stories, my humble stories. <laughs> and someone will say, what have you been in? Stuff. I'm on IMDb. I'm a SAG actor. Oh, hold on. It, it was, it's fun. It's a, the crazy thing, just as an aside, the crazy thing about being an actor and being in those kind of projects. Okay, big shout out to Tina Guy. So glad you're alive. Great job. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. The crazy thing about being an actor is that a lot of people think that being an actor is like this wonderful, crazy job. But realistically, it's like a nine to five job that you would show up. Any other job that you would show up to, not necessarily nine to five because the hour is always off. But it's like almost every other job that you ever show up to have to be on time, have to be prepared, have to know what you're doing, you know, have to know where you're going, the whole nine. And you just interview a lot. Like it's a lot of interviews. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, and this is how I also know about production, and this is what I'm saying. Like I'm looking, I'm looking at the uh, sister wife situation from multiple angles, as far as how this goes, especially when it comes down to the productions. Oh, I'm so natural on camera. Thank you very much. Um, the crazy thing about it is this: is that as I'm watching uh, Back to Mary and the foolishness, y'all, <laughs> but as I'm watching that them unfold, their relationships unfold. I have a lot of, just, just to put it out there, I have a lot of experience because I enjoy people. I enjoy talking to people and I have a personality, not even like a humble brag thing, just to, you know, realistically, I have the type of personality where I go out and I like talking to people 
And I'm one of those guys who, when I was a younger man, and I would, you know, around the time when you start going out to bars and clubs and all that, I would go out to bars and clubs by myself because for me, I was forced to meet people and for in order for me to have a good time, I walk in and in all fairness, I'm a bigger guy anyway. So I walk in, I'm not really concerned about a whole lot of problems or issues. So I walk in and I would meet people. I would sit at the bar and all of a sudden people would come over, start talking to me and I'd have conversations. I meet all kinds of folks met all kinds of people and I and I've talked to all kinds of different people from different forms of life. I talked to people who are deca millionaires all the way down to people who are, you know, sleeping in their car. Like I don't I don't care. I think people are people and for the most part everybody wants pretty much the same thing, ironically. <laughs> like as crazy as it is. White, black, short, tall, skinny, fat, don't make a difference. We all kind of want the same thing. You basically want safety, security, you want to make sure your kids are okay. <laughs> and you want to have some place to go and you want to feel like you're a part of something. That's pretty much humanity all boiled down. Oh, wow. Uh, one of the things I will say is that as I'm watching the sister wife situation, because I've known people in these types of situations, not necessarily in a polygamous situation. Maybe I have, just don't know it. But I've, I've watched people in these types of relationship dynamics and the relationship dynamics are always pretty much the same, regardless of whether you're a polygamous, polyamorous, monogamous, whatever the case may be. People have things that they want and things that they need in order for you to successfully carry out this type of polygamous relationship, at least in my view, you have to have the kind of personality where you can be compassionate, empathetic. You have to be sympathetic. You have to be excellent as far as time management is concerned because you have so many people and so many responsibilities to make sure that you're meeting everybody's needs as that uh, patriarch or matriarch in a, a polygamist or, or a, well, I forget what they call it for uh, the women. It slips my mind. But if you have multiple partners, you have a lot of people that you have to to uh, make sure that you're taking care of. Uh, big shout out to Robin Camp. Look forward to all your videos. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody. I do read a lot of the uh, comments when I do post on uh, YouTube just to go through them. And, and I try to get back to as many people as I can. But a lot... I. Uh, unfortunately, I read a lot more than I respond to because I got big ass hands and I'll be trying to work the phone and if, if the messages be funky. So <laughs> I have to wait a lot of times so I get back and I got a, a computer to work with. But I appreciate everybody taking time. But uh, what was I? I'm sorry. What was I saying? I got confused. I got lost. Um, but when it comes down to a lot of these relationships that I see, especially when it comes to like Mary and all these types of folks. We'll just start where I left off getting to this clip. When it comes to Mary and watching her deal with these people, you know, if you're going to be in these relationships, these polygamous or polyamorous relationships, you have, you're spreading yourself thin. And when I see these people in these relationships, and they take it for granted. And especially when they're in these poly polygamous relationships, there's, you know, Brown family, and they look down on monogamous because monogamous do this and monogamous do that. And because we're not monogamous, we're this, that, not. Look, when push comes down to shove, it, whether you're a monogamist or a polygamist, you have to make sure that your partner or partners are fulfilled and secure within that relationship or you will have problems, period. Why is Mary as upset as she was, possibly as nasty as she was? Cody says she was always nasty. She was probably nasty because she never felt secure in her marriage after you started adding wives because he said early on they were having problems and then he added Janelle not resolving any of the problems he had with Mary. Then he has issues with Janelle and Mary and him and Janelle and everybody's got problems and he adds Christine and then nobody in the marriage felt secure within the marriage and then all of a sudden you had the love of your life the woman who comes in and wants to be ev the every woman to everything that you have going on so yeah you're going to have problems and that's what we're seeing now let's take a look at the next clip which is going to be Mary and how she <laughs> described that second part of what happened when she did the whole, uh, or yeah, I think it's Mary. 
Or it might be Cody. Let's take a look because I can't remember. He didn't actually call. When Mary called me and asked me if we were going to do anything for her, our anniversary, I just said, well, I'm watching the kids. I needed a minute to, you know, like, think. I needed a reason to be able to say no in the event I just didn't think it was the right thing for me to do. And I had to think about that. I had to think about that when she called and asked me that because I had to figure out whether I wanted to go or not. Death knell. <laughs> Death knell. I, I read some, through some of the messages. I appreciate all your words and kindness. That's, that's awesome. You guys are uh, really touching. You trying to get, get a brother to cry, trying to make my eyes sweat. <laughs> oh, shit. Ivelisse Ramirez. Holla. LOL. Now I got to say... Is you from my mom? She loves your videos. Oh, okay. That's awesome. <laughs> but look, look, anytime a dude is sitting there trying to figure out how to tell you no, that's never a good sign. That's never a good sign. <laughs> that's never a good sign. You know, because you'll sit there and you'll complain and complain and complain and talk about, you know, this is what's going on, and that's what's going on, and oh, I I got to spend time with them, and this, that, and the other. But if they don't want to spend time with you, none of that matters. And then even from uh, Monroe's voice, I think Mary was a mastermind, and that's why she won't let go. This is true. She plays Robin to mess with Christine. She picked Robin to mess with Christine and Janelle, and it backfired like a mother. Yeah, it did. And that's the whole thing is that sometimes you outplot yourself because Mary went out and found somebody who Cody actually liked more than he likes anybody else. So you just undid yourself by trying to screw somebody else over. And that's also part of the reason why I'm not a big fan of messing around with karma. Karma is enough of a biatch. She don't need nobody's help. Karma will kick your ass up between your shoulder blades. She don't need you to help stretch her out. She got this. <laughs> You said, Karma, I'm going to screw this guy over. Karma say, oh, hold my beer. Watch this. <laughs> I'm going to show you what it's like. And that's the whole thing. Like, the best thing Mary could have done in that particular situation was pack her bags and go. If you if things aren't working out the way you want the relationship to go, and I'm not even a, saying that you should just walk out or leave every relationship that, that you don't like or if you <laughs> if the person gives you just a whiff, of you not liking something, you should pack your bag and go. No, because relationships are hard. Relationships are difficult. Relationships are tough. And you will struggle in relationships. You will try to find uh, periods where you're in a relationship with somebody long term, longer than a week sometimes. And you try to figure out why you should stay and why you should go. If your reasons for staying are bigger than your reasons for going, then stay and try to figure it out. However, if you find yourself in a situation with somebody who don't want to be with you, and don't want to spend time with you, and you call them up and they trying to figure out ways to tell you that they don't want to spend time with you, to hell with them. Give them the gift of goodbye. That's my whole perspective. Give them the gift of goodbye. Because if you don't love and respect yourself enough to be able to look at somebody else and say, you know what? No, thank you. If you feel like you suffering, sacrificing, giving up a bunch of stuff to hang out with me, then I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go through no changes. I don't want you to have any problems. <laughs> I know, right? Kim K M Gilbertson with five dollars super chat said, "I've been waiting for Simon's porch dream hissy fit since the trailer. Growing impatient. I just want to see her cry." <laughs> okay, okay. You just want to see her cry. Uh, that's every episode. You can see her cry every episode. She she is not a person. Like, it's to the point now where I don't mind people who are emotionally available, people who are in touch with their feelings, people who get emotional. Like, I understand that, and I think that that's okay. That's cool. If you, that's who you are, that's who you are. But there comes a point where it's a fine line between you being uh, upset about things that's happening and you just being downright emotionally unstable. <laughs> and, and Robin is hitting that point where she just seems to be emotionally unstable. Because you, if you cry like that, 
I would be more concerned. That, like, is he holding you hostage? Blink, blink, woman. You got them cameras there? Just throw the papers down. Like the hell with it. He got me. Please come and get me. Something. Because the way she's she's so upset about everything, good stuff, bad stuff, she crying. Now I don't like I said, maybe it's just who she is, and I'm not saying it. You know, some people are emotional that way. They just cry at the drop of a hat, and I and I don't mind it, and it doesn't bother me. But it just like there's something about her, and I think it's because she's so disingenuous with everything else that she has going on. From what I see. And it makes me kind of second guess every time she starts crying and every time she starts welling up. It makes me kind of pause a little bit because you notice some bullshit is about to come. Because she always says something to the effect of one thing will happen and then you'll have like, a, like we'll watch something happen on the show. I'm not even going to do a hypothetical. We'll watch something happen on the show. The whole situation, the whole scenario. And then like two, three episodes later, Robin's there crying, trying to describe how the thing that we all saw happen didn't happen that way. And everybody was out to get her. And somehow she was the victim. She's the kind of person that you be walking across the street, you'll get hit by a car. She'll be three blocks down the road. She don't even see the accident. But then she'll come around the corner and be crying to the police and to the news people and talk about how this accident has affected her. They'll be loading your ass in the back of an ambulance with the neck brace on, the whole nine, you can't, you trying to wiggle your toes. And she'll be sitting there talking about how this is messing her day up. Like that's the, and then she'll be crying the whole time. Oh God, I, 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 yeah, 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 doing ugly face. Like ugly crying at that. <laughs> like, yeah, like you can't be that hurt. Like, come on now. And that's, and that's where it gets weird for me. Oh, good evening, James. Wonderful catch up. Catch you live. All right, two wolves, BJD. Just, I'm sorry I'm catching people like here and there. Finally went live. Yes, Aaron C. Yeah, I did. I'm trying to get some shout outs. Yeah, yeah. The worst thing that Robin did was take her kids from a, a black, black swan. I totally agree. They, black that, they blackmailed that man out of his kids. And that's one of the things that kind of makes me like anti-Robin from the rip. And to be honest with you, I, I for that reason and that reason alone, I probably wouldn't watch a show with Robin in it. If she was the only person, her and Cody, or if she broke up with Cody and they tried to give her a spinoff, I probably wouldn't watch that show. Because I don't I don't necessarily like to reward evil people. And I, to be honest with you, I'm kind of skirting the line a little bit because I'm rewarding Cody. <laughs> <laughs> watching him get screwed over. But I can't help but be happy that my man gets screwed over. F him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he, he's one of them dudes. Like, Cody is everything that I don't like about jackass dudes. Like, because the whole men are supposed to be this. And then every time he says something about how a man is supposed to be, his, his version of manhood is always standing on top of somebody else's damn neck. You ever notice that? Like, he doesn't talk about, when he talks about manhood, it's always like, oh, because I'm a man, and I, you know, when I'm strong, men have uh, polygamous, like I pointed out in my last video, you know, every strong man in history had multiple wives, and this, that, and other. And it's always about how he's standing on top of somebody's damn neck. Okay, big shout out to uh, Amber Keller with the $20 super chat. Thank you so much. I might make you the... Uh, <laughs> she's hosting the stream she's <laughs> but but that's the whole thing with this like that's what pisses me off so much about cody and when i watch it that's what like when i talk to my daughter about it especially you know one of the things that always pisses me off about watching cody is that everything he does and every offense he ever suffers is always about how somebody's offended him and somebody did something to him and it affects his manhood and his perspective. And granted, that's him being selfish and egotistical. But then at the same time, he refers back to, oh, this is also disrespectful to me as a man. You being a man has nothing to do with the fact that you don't take care of your kids. You being a man and having a penis doesn't stop you from being a father, jackass. It never does. 
You have every opportunity to be a father. You're sitting here saying that you're getting screwed over by Christine and, the, and Janelle because they're talking crap about you when you break up. Yeah, bitch, that's what happens. When you break up with somebody, they're going to talk shit on you. I'm sorry I'm cussing, but this is a, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting that point. Like I guess we must hit 45 minutes in. Look, that's what happens. When you break up with people, they're going to talk crap about you. Okay? Co-parent... Whatever the case may be, you have to find common ground and try to work around it. Hopefully, you reach a point of maturity and development in your relationship where you can actually have a more cohesive bond and more of a productive relationship with that other person. But until that point, yeah, they're going to talk shit about you. Your job, though, as a father is to be present. So when she does talk shit about you, you your kid has a frame of reference and mindset to be able to go back and look at what you said, which reminded me, I wanted to talk about something because I was planning on going live last week. So I'm sorry if I'm kind of ranting a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to kind of rant a little bit. So but, oh, bear with me. Buckle up, buttercup, because we're going to take a ride. On the last episode where Cody had talked about, uh, or Christina said, yeah, I removed uh, truly from the situation while she still had a good relationship with Cody and yada, yada, yada. And I kind of preserved it and I'll bring her back. And then I kind of preserved it and I'll bring her back. And that preserved the relationship between Cody and her daughter, Truly. And Cody looked right in the camera and said, yeah, that's bullshit. She took my child away. Here's the secret. And I heard one of the other uh, YouTubers, I'm not going to holler their name out because I'm, I'm not that petty. If they see this and they want to call me out or say something, it is what it is. <laughs> but, <laughs> what up then? <laughs> but, oh, oh, real quick, uh, big shout out to KM Gilbertson. Five dollars super chat, K not understanding and blaming Maddie for cutting him out for surprise, but nah, did not make me just sick. Yeah, I agree with that. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about that. Discount Andrew Tate. Yeah, this is so true. But the whole thing is, is that when... Christine was talking about taking Truly away and then removing to save that relationship. Some people criticized and said, that's bullshit. I don't think so. And I'll tell you why. Here's why I think that Christine might have been on to something. Because if you look at Cody and his relationships with his kids, right, his current children, how many of his kids, of his other uh, 13 children, not the five he had with Robin, but the other 13, of those 13 kids, I think he may have a may have a relationship with two. Of those 13 kids, I think he may have a relationship with two of them. The two I'm thinking about is Logan and Maddie. And the reason why I say Logan and Maddie is because when uh, they were having a text exchange about exchanging gifts, Robin reached out to Logan and Maddie to tell the other kids that they're not messing with them no more. So I think that those might be the only two kids that, out of the 13 kids. He got 11 kids he don't mess with and don't mess with him. That's horrible averages. Could you imagine getting on a plane and dude only, out of, he flies a plane and out of 11 flights, he only land the plane twice? Yeah, I want a refund on my ticket. <laughs> How about that? I want a refund on my ticket. I'm not getting on a plane with this joker. Are you crazy? He only land out of 11. Or, or, yeah, out of 13, he only land the plane 11 times. He only landed twice? Nah. So I think that what... Christine was talking about, because we have to take into account the full body and the full history, the full universe of Cody's relationship with his kids. When you look at Cody dealing with his kids and the way he deals with them, especially as they start to get older, the fact that, a uh, big shout out to Kathy M with the $5 Super Chat, thank you so much. If you look at how Cody is with his kids and how he deals with his kids, this dude is horrible when he deals with his kids. He's terrible at it. And uh, Gwendolyn, Isabel, a back surgery. I mean, don't even get me started on that because I, I will cuss heavy. Back, you know, Isabel, truly down the street, literally down the street. He barely goes visit them. Sarcasm for fun. Logan and Maddie, McKelty only. Thank you. And uh, we buy new and used $10 Super Chats. Love your rants. Keep the lives coming. I will. I will. But, but when they were down the street, literally down the street, like five, ten minutes away, he couldn't find time to go visit them. 
And then he wants to say, oh, they moved them to a different state. Now I can't spend time with my kids. You wasn't spending time with them when they was five minutes down the road. Now all of a sudden you upset because she's talking about moving on with her life. Now you got to spend every weekend and every waking moment with the child that you couldn't even spend five seconds with two weeks ago. And that, was, and that to me is what makes him so reprehensible as a character when I watch him on TV. And I'll say this, if any of this is is staged or, or, or screamed, you know, they, they wrote it out and scripted it and he played it, then shame on you for playing this type of role and being upset that people think you're an asshole. But if even a fraction of this is true, a fraction of this is true, you're a horrible fucking person. Pardon my French. Pardon my French. You're a horrible person if even part of this is true. Because you have the opportunity to have that relationship with your daughter and you choose not to. Then when your wife moves away, she is doing you a favor. Because anybody who has ever talked to somebody who is a, a custodial parent who's dealing with a non-custodial parent who is, you know, so here and there, sometimey, you know, they sometimes involve, sometimes not, you know, they summertime, they summertime here, sometime there, you know, they come around and see them. Anybody who's ever dealt with one of those types of parents understands this factor. And this is something very important. When you're dealing with a non-custodial parent, the baby daddy, baby mama, who barely comes around, in most cases, the child wants to see that, that other parent. They want to be involved with that other parent. When you look at the faces of even his adult children as he's sitting around, they're sitting around talking about him, saying they don't need him. Gabe still, or uh, Garrison is still wanting his father, a relationship with his father. He's putting on a brave face saying that he doesn't care. Garrison cares. Gabriel, Gabriel cares. Savannah cares. Gwendolyn, she said she didn't want to care, but she can't help but care, can't help but to feel hurt. They want to have a relationship with their father. And the little kids are the same way. They want to have a relationship with their father. It's even more impactful because when they're dealing with him, he's sitting there saying that, oh, I don't want to come around. I don't want to be bothered. But to these kids, they're looking at it from the perspective of, it's me. Why doesn't my father want to hang out with me? Why does he want to come down and see me? Why doesn't my dad come down the block five, you know, five minutes and come see me? When we sit there watching uh, Isabel and Truly over at Robin's house, and Robin's sitting there, oh, they're having such a great time over here with everyone. It was so wonderful. I love how Truly, I'm the only parent she's ever known. <laughs> and Isabel, she was having a ball. Isabel looked like she was ready to fight somebody in that. She looked like she was fed the hell up. And part of the reason why is because when you look at Isabel, Isabel is coming from the perspective of somebody whose father had abandoned her at her moment of need when she needed him the most. And then she gets to sit around amongst him and his other kids who he spends all his time with. There's no way in the world. If one of, the, one of Robin's kids were to catch a freaking cold, and went to the hospital. There's no way in the world Cody's ass wouldn't be sitting in the emergency room holding her hand. Isabel went away to a different state across the country to get her back splayed open. Get her back splayed open. And he looked her in the face and I have this clip and I should have uploaded. I'm sorry I didn't. He looked that child in the face and told her she could go by herself. I don't know how in the world Christine held it together. Because there would have been some furniture splitting up on that mother. There would have been some problems up in that piece. I'm telling you, it would have been, been a misunderstanding. you going to look my baby in the face and tell her that she can get on a plane by herself so she can get her cut, back cut open alone? Are you out your mind? Are you crazy? And I know they do the whole, it's the Cody Costa. Oh, all that crap. I don't give a shit how you must have been. Dude, are you on meth? To make that kind of suggestion, you must have snorted something. Are you? <laughs> what are you? What are you huffing? What are you doing? <laughs> you must be French kissing a damn exhaust pipe to come in and make that kind of suggestion to a child. I wouldn't do that to an adult. I wouldn't say that to an adult. You can go get your back cut open, and, and possibly you might you might walk in that bad boy and get wheeled out. Either on your back, 
and they take you out the back door to put you in a box so they can put you in the ground, or you come out of that bad boy in a wheelchair. And, and he does that and, and said it all as casually as, but I'm looking out for my children. That's why, that's why Isabel looked mad sitting in that house. Cause she got to see firsthand what it's like to be around a functional family. The same thing Christine has been saying this whole time. You know how hard it would be from when they were talking about moving to Coyote Pass. You know how hard it would be for me to sit on Coyote Pass across the street from a person who's having a fully functional marriage when I'm not. Imagine being a daughter sitting there trying to figure out, watch her father have a fully functional father-daughter relationship with a bunch of chicks who just came into the family. Uh, yeah, she's upset. That's why That's why your kids are upset. But even in that situation, the kids want to be a part of your situation. So when we talk about truly, truly dealing with the divorce, she's going to look at herself and say, how come... My dad doesn't want to spend time with me. How come he doesn't want to want to uh you know come down the street for five minutes to hang out with me and my sisters? Why is he so busy when it comes to me? It must be me. He's not she not your kids aren't looking at it from the perspective of oh dad don't get along with mom. That's why she don't you don't want to mess with me. So when Christine moves truly away to Utah. And I'm sorry, I'm long drawing this out. And I'm kind of long stroking you guys a little bit. Apologize for that. Long winded. <laughs> I wish he had the edit button. <laughs> but, when, but when Christine moves truly away and takes her to Utah, what else did she do? She didn't just take your child away. She built in an excuse for you. She built in an excuse as to why you're not seeing her every weekend. She built in an excuse as to why you're not dealing with her or talking to her every day when you're five minutes down the road. That's what Christine did for. Her. In addition to that, when you as a non-custodial parent go out of your way to bring that child down from Utah down to Arizona, oh, thank you very much. Uh, Kim's finally free. All right, free Kim. Free Kim, $20 super chat. You're awesome, James. Keep telling the truth. Thank you. But when you come, when she comes down from Utah to Arizona, guess what you get to do, Cody? You get to spend the week or weekend that you planned to spend with your daughter with your daughter. And when you do spend that time with your daughter, you get to be a hero. Because then you can plan all kinds of things that you want to do. You can take her out to get something to eat. Take her to the movies. Take her to here. Take her to there. Have all these things, games and entertainment and activities planned. Which makes you dad in a damn year. You're not getting her up for school. You're not making sure she does her homework. You're not punishing her for stuff that she's doing wrong. When she doesn't do, come home and do her chores, etc., etc., etc. You're not even being a full-fledged parent. You're being a vacation dad. You're being the best possible dad you can be, which is very similar or mirrored to what Robin is doing for you. You get to, when she was sending, when Robin was, like I said earlier, when Robin was sending uh, Cody off to go be with the other wives, she get to recharge her batteries. When Cody comes back, she get to flip the tricks and and then bring out the masks and the, uh, and the hula hoops and do the whole nine. She get to go buck wild on him. And then, you know, she spent an evening with him or one or two nights with him. And then she sent him off and she get to recharge her batteries. Same thing here. When Christine takes Co Truly over to Utah, you get to re recharge your batteries. Get it worked out. Get Figure it out. And then when you get Truly back, boom, you get to be dad in a year again. And when you get tired of being dad in a year, you get to send her back home and recharge your batteries. So, yes, she did you a favor by moving Truly away. And, that, and that's the way I see it. Oh, big shout out to Brenda Hawkins with the $10 super chat. Holla at your boy. <laughs> Some of you are like, James is silly. Yeah, I can be. I can be. I apologize. Oh. Kotex wants to be a hero, but nah. He's nothing, she's not a convenience. And I agree with that, Rochelle J. I agree with that. Like, Because when you look at Cody and he talks about all his relationships with his other people, what does he always say? It's not convenient. When he talked about uh, Christine, you know, not making it convenient for him to spend time with Gwendolyn, <laughs> Isabel, and uh, Truly. And here's the crazy part. During the time when, when COVID happened, and he blames everything on COVID. When COVID happened, he said, uh, 
Christine was all, she was on vacation or whatever, visiting family. She was visiting her kids. And Isabel, Gwendolyn, and Truly were home. I think it was Isabel and Gwendolyn, I think it was. And he said, well, have them call the doctors. You got to call the doctors for me. I don't trust them to call the doctors for themselves. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't think Isabel or her adult sister Gwendolyn are mature enough to call to get a doctor's appointment so that they can get a rapid test so that you can go see them. You guys can set that up. But you think that Isabel is mature enough to get on a plane and get back surgery? This is why people think Cody's an ass. And a big old ass. This is why you're an ass. <laughs> Point blank. The next, let's do, let's run through some of these other clips. I don't want to keep you guys. I mean, I, I think I'm holding you guys up. You're like this dude is a talker. <laughs> I can be. I can be a talker. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Rob is a glorified mistress who managed to get the legal title, Lizzie B. And that's not a mistake. Robin was smart when when she did that. Like she, and, and I don't think it was a mistake. We'll push him down the shelf. I think, I don't really buy the whole, we had to, uh, oh, no apologies needed. Thank you, Miss Bueller. Uh, I don't think, I don't think the whole divorce thing was about adoption. I think the divorce thing was about the fact that Cody and Matt met and wanted to marry the woman he was in love with. And they used the adoption and the, uh, thing as something that Robin wanted for sure. Because she wanted to make sure that her kids were financially set. And she made sure that her kids were financially set by ensuring that she was getting married. Because if you think about the way things kind of rolled out, and I'll get into the clips in a moment. But I like to explain, explain this out. Because we this is the first time we got to talk, y'all. I'm so excited about it. But if you, if you blow everything out, what are the course of events that happen in chronological order? Cody supposedly met Robin through Mary. I don't necessarily buy that. I think Cody and Robin were kind of knew each other beforehand. And this is something they came up with. Robin had ingratiated herself to Mary, possibly on Cody's assistance. And let's be honest, like even the way things get set up, especially in these types of relationships, if I was a dirty, low down dude and I was in a situation like this, how would I do it? I would go out uh, before we get that sarcasm for fun, $2 super chat. We like your man's point of view. Let's get it. That's right. Thank you very much. But when, if I was in this situation and I had a wife who was willing to let me date other people, which is crazy. <laughs> At least I, yeah. That's a hard conversation, Jack. Yeah, baby. I was thinking uh, maybe we could open this relationship up. Because <laughs> most of them would be like, well, I'm about to open your head up. <laughs> See what good sense you got left. But he goes to uh, the wife he have and say, know that she's okay with him getting other wives. He meets Robin, or Robin more to the point, meets him because she knew about the show. She knew about this. These communities are small. Like, it, they pretend like, oh, wait, she had no idea. I had no idea what a TV was. <laughs> but they knew, I think she knew about the show, and I think she set it up so she could meet him. So she goes down, she meets up with Cody, and they're doing the whole bit, right? And they're talking. And he says, look, I don't want to have it come out that I met you and this is something I'm doing because that's going to look bad. So go meet uh, my wife. We'll meet, be at this location on such and such day. We just happen to be in the same area at the same time. And you don't like you, you're over somebody's house and you just don't happen. You just so happen to meet her cousin who came down from two or three states away to go to her church and is spending the weekend without her kids. That ain't make no sense. Okay, but fine. We'll pretend. You say, this is Mary, my wife Mary. This is what she like. This is what she don't like. This is what she's into. Don't say this. Don't say that. She's, she's secure about this. She's proud of that. And she's insecure about these things. Stay away from these topics. Then you go to the party. She, you know, she runs into Mary. Bingo, bango. Then all of a sudden, do you like Robin James? No. Robin's not my kind of people. And, uh, thank you for the super chat. We buy new and used $2 super chat. Uh, no, Robin's not my kind of people. <laughs> Straight up. Even like, I, I just don't like the, I don't, I don't like the sneakiness of her. Uh, 
but they they she meets with Cody, Cody and Robin uh supposedly meet up with Mary. Mary encourages them to go out. They go out. Then all of a sudden they start dating. He's driving five hours away to go see this woman. I'm a dude. I'm telling you, there's no way in the world a man is driving five hours away to go see a woman. Go sit on a couch. It's not happening. It's, it's totally not happening. And I don't, I don't want to be a pig about it, but look, most guys aren't even driving halfway across town to go see somebody that they not, you know, dusting off. Like, it's just not, I don't, I don't buy it. And he's doing this every weekend. He's, he's in his car. Come home from work, breeze past his wives, go pack his stuff, run all over the houses to <laughs> put his shit up in a suitcase and go see this other woman. Yeah, she's not my kind of people either. I'm with you. But, uh, <laughs> so he, he runs all over the house, get a bag, bag together so he can go, go on the road. And in the meantime, he's sitting there. His wife is pregnant as hell. Christine was pregnant as shit. And that's kind of one of the things that gets overlooked during the first couple of seasons that nobody really talked about. Christine was pregnant as hell. And not only was she pregnant, not only was Christine pregnant, Christine had just had a miscarriage where he took her into the hospital and she almost damn died. You can't tell me that that's not the most ignorant thing in the world. And I had said before, that when it came to Maddie and it came to, uh, or, or not Maddie, I'm sorry, it came to Aspen, or not Aspen, I'm saying all the children name. <laughs> this, where the end button at? Where the edit button? <laughs> this is what I was saying about Isabel. When he was supposed to go get that surgery, Robin should have been the main one talking about, if you don't get your ass on the plane, don't come back here no more. If I was dating somebody, and, or if, you, if you're a woman, it, it really won't work with me because <laughs> she'd be the one pregnant. But <laughs> if you're dating somebody and he supposedly has a wife at home who is sick or having a baby and it's a high risk pregnancy and he's getting in his car driving five hours to see you, then you have to ask yourself at some point, is this who this man is? And if this is who he is, do I want to be around him and associate with him? My answer, of course, will be hell to the nizzle. Re big shout out to Reverend Dr. April Hearn. I think Mary was <laughs> eager enough. Wait, what's this? Oh, man, I just missed it. No, I'm sorry. I talk too much. <laughs> Now it won't even move. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, showing the door. Divorce papers in hand. Yeah, you right about that, Doc. I love that, Reverend Doctor. <laughs> Hot damn. Yeah. Yeah, she ain't count on being show the door with them divorce papers. But the whole thing is, is that if you are dating a guy and he's willing to treat his current wife a certain way, you got to ask how much time is going to pass before he's treating me that same way. Because you know it's in his character but to mistreat people because he's mistreating the one he's supposed to care about. The woman he's supposed to love and take care of. And this is kind of that weird thing. And I'll give a little... Uh, Little aside, little story. <laughs> Sorry about this, y'all. You talk too much. <laughs> but as an aside, there was one time I was dating a young lady. And there was another young lady who was interested in talking to me too. And she knew full well that I had somebody else. Knew full well I had somebody else. And she was talking to me, you know, I like you, blah, blah, blah. And I don't care that you were somebody else, blah, blah, blah. You know, I just like your personality, I like your character, et cetera, et cetera. And the thing that I had explained to her, and, and you know, temptation was there. I'm not even going to front like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm made of steel. I'm Teflon. No, no, I'm a human being. And so temptation is there. But the thing is, is that if I were to, to go off and do the thing that she wanted me to do, or the things, <laughs> I did the things she wanted me to do, 
then I wouldn't be the man that she was attracted to. Like, you know, that's the craziest part about it is that if you go out and you do the stuff that, you know, you're, you're with somebody, you're committed to somebody and you go off and be with other people, you know, because they think that you're a stand up person because you're a committed person and you are, you know, committed to your family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then you go off and you betray your family. You betray the trust of the person that you're with to be with this other person. Then you aren't the man that they are attracted to. And it's that simple. If Cody is supposed to be this, excuse me real quick. <coughs> Pardon me. If Cody is supposed to be this caring, compassionate, loving man that Robin fell in love with and she wants to be with, and then she go, he comes, <laughs> he comes five hours away, wife pregnant as hell, you know, high risk pregnancy. She could bust it any minute and he's driving five hours away. If she went into labor, there's a possibility he wouldn't even make it back to the state line before she either got into the, she had the baby or she expired. There's a possibility that she could have passed. Cause, cause as much as people, and I've always said this, as much as people take pregnancies for granted, pregnancies are, are, are dangerous. You know what I mean? It's, it's serious. Like being pregnant is not a joke. It's, it's something that, you know, women do that and they maintain it. And I've always said that if it was up to men to carry children, the species would have died out. <laughs> the human race would be over. If it was up to men, like if, if some, a lightning bolt hit the planet and all of a sudden men had to get pregnant and carry kids, this bad boy is done. <laughs> you can go ahead and cancel Christmas and roll credits because the human race is finished. But women take that upon themselves to have babies. God bless you for that. Big shout out to uh, Zamorpha Didnick. <laughs> 14, uh, 1499 Super Chat. I'm sorry if I'm blowing your names. I'm so sorry. Like, this dude can't read. <laughs> oh, next uh, Super Chat. Fam girl. Okay. What's up, girl? I remember you. I, I've seen your uh, post. Congrats on your first live. You've got this, James. You speak the common sense. Thank you very much. But, um, I'm sorry. What was I saying? Damn. I'm, whew, that's what happened. When you get this little white in your beard, you be forgetting shit. <laughs> what did I come upstairs for? <laughs> <laughs> you won't remember till you get downstairs. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? You're with somebody, they're driving five hours away from their family and their loved ones. And these women are risking their lives to give you a, yet another child that you don't need. <laughs> he needed no more kids like he needed a hole in his damn head. But th th they do this thing for you. And you, they, you drive five hours away to abandon them so that you can sit in a cafe drinking hot cocoa with this woman. Then that says a lot about both of you. And that's part of the reason why I say that neither one of them are my kind of people. They're not my kind of people. Because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do a dude, be friends with a guy who would leave his family like that. Like, I, I understand, like, you know, in polygamy, you meet these people, you fall in love with them, you got to spend time with them. That's all cool and that's great. But... At the same time, you got to take care of your family. Like you have to take care of your, just because you're trying to expand your family, you still got to take care of the family you got. And leaving your wife like that is completely inappropriate. And, that, and that's part of the reason why you have, he had such problems that he had with leaving his family the way he did. But you, you do all that. Oh, you're fantastic. Appreciate your point of view. Thank you very much. Christina Fisher with the $10 super chat. Thank you. Um, you do all this crazy stuff and you wonder why you have problems. And then, then as everything moves on, you, you're paying for, cause it's my understanding that he was paying. They were, the Brown family was paying for Robin's place where she was living before she moved down to, to Lehigh. They were paying for that. Then she moves down to Lehigh. They rent her a house around the corner. They're paying for that. And this whole time, she's trying to improve her kids' lives. She's she's with Cody because it's making her kids' lives. She even said, and I had a clip earlier, where she had talked about the reason why she picked Cody was because she wanted the best outcome for her kids. And what there was no better outcome for a prospect of outcome for her kids than a guy who's got his own TV show coming up. So he, she makes that move. Then you have that part of it. 
Then she, they leave Utah because the police are supposed to be coming. That, that was a ridiculous storyline. The police coming, they coming. <laughs> you leave in the town or the district or, the, or whatever. Once you commit a crime in a district, just because they haven't sworn out a, a, a arrest warrant yet, doesn't mean that they can't because you left town. Ha ha, I'm out of town. This ain't the Dukes of Hazzard. They go, they go across to Las Vegas and get your ass. They don't care. Or you just can't never come back to Utah again. Because you have open warrant. But apparently when they left Utah and they went to Las Vegas, it was with it, they were still in the the rental house when Robin's ass turned up pregnant. That was planned. Because at that point, Robin was new. At that time, they although they did this spiritual marriage and they did the ceremony, they weren't married, married. Right? She didn't have any legal claim to any of the money or any of the proceeds from the show at that point. Even though they were married, you know, they fantasy married, you know, Space Jesus married, but they they weren't married, married. So when she had that baby, Solomon, she got pregnant with Solomon, that locked her into the money. Right? Then they started moving into like what a uh, fourth. Fifth seasons, they started about talk about buying houses. It wasn't until they talked, they bought those houses in Vegas, that all of a sudden she wanted to get married and she wanted to adopt her, those kids. Miracles happen. Miracles happen. All of a sudden, he's got enough money and he's starting to develop all this real estate, getting his name on all these real estates, and all of a sudden she got to get married because she wanted to adopt some kids. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can do math, baby. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, they all took part in the cover-up. I agree with that. I think it was all a cover-up. I think that he met Robin, and it would look bad for them. Because if you think about, too, how many times have we heard them say something to the effect of, they and we'll get into it in a minute. I got to get through these clips. I'm sorry. I'm dragging this thing out. But how many times have they said before that Cody was concerned about how it would look on TV? Why doesn't Cody... After season two, Cody doesn't even sit next to uh, Robin on the couch anymore because of how it looks. Because so many people say that she's the favorite wife. So he he refused to sit on the couch next to her. Or the two of them refuse to get a picture together or be standing next to one another. That's why she's always on the other side of the room. Even now they talk about like Robin's concerned about it when, it, when Mary came over to the house. She wanted to be on the other side of the room and not be close to him because she's concerned with how it looks. They've always kept that in mind. It's always been about how it looks. So it would look really terrible if he has a pregnant wife and he's out there scoping other women. That would be terrible. That would have been a rough start. And Robin would have got a lot of hate. She caught hate anyway because I think of how she carries herself. Because I don't think that Robin was disliked just because she was the youngest wife in the situation. I think Robin was disliked because of the way she went about it. I think Robin was disliked because she was disingenuous with how she treated the other women. I think Robin was disliked because she had favor of a man who favored her and she did nothing to try to justify that favor. like to, or, or not even so much justify the favor, but to say to the man who's sp spending so much time and attention on her, hey, you need to spend time and attention on these other women. She has a say. And her voice was louder than even the OG3s. You know, Mr. Uh, we used to not celebrate Easter. Until she came in the family, decided she was going to celebrate Easter anyway. Go see her. <laughs> I'm going to go see my mama. No, baby. No, no, baby, baby. Uh, wives, we celebrate Easter now. <laughs> I don't want my wives wearing earrings. You whores ain't wearing no earrings. That's the, that's the jewelry of the devil. <laughs> Robin, come in. I'm not taking my earrings out. Like I said, ladies, adorn your ears with precious gemstones and gold and precious metals. <laughs> <laughs> Robin has a Robin had a say. So Robin had a say, and there was a way that Robin could have enforced some of these rules. As much as she talks about she wanted the family to be together and she wanted all the women to get together on the porch and cry about my big dream. As much as she talks about that, Robin was the one person who could have made that happen. Had she conducted herself a little differently, because Cody would have did whatever she wanted him to do. She throw that pencil box on him, a tell him more to the point. She closed the pencil box on his ass one good time. Oh, pencil box is closed. He's like, baby, whatever you want me to do, I will do. 
<laughs> and that would have been that. Look, all right, we gonna, we gonna get in one of these other clips because I don't want you guys talking bad about me. He kept me on that damn live. I got work in the morning, this fool. All right, let's let's take a look at this next clip. He said, don't you understand, Mary? This is never going to happen. Your life is not one that I want to insert myself into. Like, I'll never forget those words. Like, this is the first time he's ever said this to me. Like, ever. That was very, very painful for me. Could you imagine a dude looking you in the face and like, under no circumstances do I want to be with you? <laughs> I don't want to insert myself in your life. What the f- Are you crazy? <laughs> Why are you still there? And this is one of the things that makes it so hard for me to be on Mary's side. Like, I want to- I, 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 I don't like Cody and I don't respect Cody for the way he treats these ladies. I don't. And it bothers me the way he treats these ladies because these ladies trusted him and he took that trust and he corrupted those relationships. He corrupted those women. He made a lot of those women, whether it's his fault or society's fault or the cult he was, or I'm sorry, the religion he was part of, whatever the case may be. And I apologize for that. That was a little out of pocket. But as much as he put those ladies through, you know, like I said, Mary, you sometimes, you know, he's mistreating you. Uh, you're going up. We want to listen to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, you, as, as bad as Cody is treating Mary, you know, at some point, she has taken on the role of the flogger. She's flogging and beating herself for Cody. Cody's not even there anymore. And she's still beating herself and still beating herself up and still feeling like she has to be a part of this. And maybe some of my anger, and I'm going to be honest, I'm going to do some retrospective or introspective on myself. Maybe some of my anger towards Cody is misplaced in the sense that it's not completely his fault that these women are so down on themselves because part of it is their yes it is their upbringing and the way they were kind of uh milled through some of these religions and the thinking that it's on them and they, they carry the weight and the pressure of making sure that these relationships stick together and the whole like suffering silence bullshit that cody was talking about oh yeah it's the sanctity of solace or whatever the the uh be, the sacred loneliness or whatever the i'm <laughs> whatever he said right so maybe it's that that has me so angry at Cody, but it, because he is a participant. But what makes me kind of frustrated with Mary is, is that she also is a participant in her own sadness. You know, my brother, I said this before in a video years ago when I was in high school, my brother said probably one of the most profound things I've heard uh, another man say, well, he's a smart dude, but he said, uh, he said, you know, nobody can walk all over you unless you lay down for him first. And when I'm watching Mary, Mary, it seems like she's constantly laying down for this fool, letting him just walk all over. Her. And then she's just taking it as though, you know, she's going to win the gold medal in the suffrage Olympics. And then this guy's all of a sudden going to want to be with her. Like he is not going to want to be with you no matter how much you suffer. This is, like I said, this, I, and this, I don't mean this is a, a form of disrespect. It just is what it is. This is what I was talking about when I said that Mary, Christine, and the OG3, and Janelle, the OG3, were basically side chicks, and, and they've been friend-zoned. And once they've been friend-zoned, no matter what they do, they're not going to work their way out of their friend zone. And a lot of you ladies, a lot of you ladies on this live know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. Big shout out to uh, Flying Mom Laura with the five dollars super chat. I think Mary is punishing herself over the whole catfish drama. I agree with that. She hasn't forgiven herself yet, and that's part of the problem. The the biggest problem I have, and I want to, I'm actually going to talk about this in a, a 90 Day Fiance Last Resort video or live I plan on doing. 
But when you are in a situation and your relationship isn't working out, leave the relationship because the relationship isn't working out. Don't wait around to get somebody else to leave the relationship for. And I think that that was part of the problem that by the time Mary got herself around into the mindset that she was going to leave this relationship, she wasn't leaving a relationship because she wanted to explore new options and she wanted to improve her life and her lifestyle and herself. She left the relationship because she was going to go be with somebody else. And when you leave somebody for somebody, then you're putting a lot of pressure onto that future relationship that doesn't have to necessarily be. You're putting undue pressure on that relationship. Relationships are hard enough. But if you have that relationship and you say that this relationship has to work out because I left my husband to be in this relationship, and if that relationship fails, it doesn't matter how big a dick your husband was because you're always going to feel bad that you left that relationship. Shout out to Wendy Adams with the $4 super chat. Love your insights. Thank you very much. But it doesn't matter how much you loved your uh your 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 new boyfriend if you left your husband and your new boyfriend turns out to be a bigger asshole than your husband because you apparently attract assholes, right? Then what happens is you start to second guess whether you should have left that last relationship. Whether maybe I should, that relationship was good and I was wrong. And that's where I think Mary and the catfish kind of come into play. Mary was upset with Cody because Cody was ignoring her and he was in love with his wife because Robin is his wife. He was in love with his wife and he was trying to spend time with his family. And so Mary in trying to make herself whole and get some back and then, you know, get some attention. And like she said, he was the person, the catfish was paying attention to her. She was having an affair. Let's call it what it is. Mary was having an affair and she was having an affair because the person she was having an affair with was giving her something that her husband wasn't because her husband was dropping the ball. And so she had somebody else come in there and pick the ball up and try to run with it. And it didn't work out. And because it didn't work out, she became the example for the rest of the wives. Mary was the example because when Mary wanted to leave, she set the example that if you leave the relationship and it doesn't work out, then you're going to want to come back. And when you come back, I'm going to treat you like shit. And that's what basically what Cody was teaching other women. And unfortunately for, for, for Cody, it didn't stick with Christine. Because when Christine left, Christine did something a little bit different. Christine left the relationship mostly because he was messing around with her kids, screwing her kids over. But when she left the relationship, she left, her, she left Cody. Not left Cody for somebody else. She left Cody because she didn't like the way Cody was treating her. And more importantly, she didn't like how he was treating her kids. And that was enough to carry her through. And because she left the way she left, it made her stronger in her resolve as to why she was going. So it was like she wasn't going to fall out of love with her kids and she wasn't going to fall out of love with herself. Those relationships are never going to be bad investments. So the likelihood that she was going to have to return back to Cody because the relationships didn't work out were non-existent. And she also set an example. So once Christine was out, it was just a matter of time before Mary and Janelle was gone too. Because she showed them that it could actually happen. One of the most dangerous things in these types of, uh, I won't, again, I'm about to say cult again. <laughs> One of the most dangerous things in these types of relationships is the fact that you have somebody who successfully gets out. If you have the whole purpose of the shunning, the whole purpose of her being punished, even with uh, the assistance that Jen Robin had, that Christine be punished, the assistant that, assistance that Cody had, that Janelle no longer be spoke to, or no longer speaks to Christine, the assistance that she he had, that Mary ignores Christine. They, didn't, they weren't talking no way, so no love lost there. But the whole purpose of that was to put Christine out there on the island by herself so that she would suffer and then have to return. And because she was out there by herself and she was loving that freedom, and it, you know, like Cody said, she's the pod piper of the kids. She took the kids with her. And then all of a sudden, Christine wasn't alone and she was okay with leaving Cody. One of the greatest gifts you could give yourself is to be in love with yourself. Love yourself. Take some time out. Love yourself. Appreciate yourself. Go treat yourself because that's where you get the strength and the resolve to be able to walk from these bad relationships, these shitty ass relationships. 
When, when people aren't treating you the way you deserve to be treated, you love yourself enough to be by yourself if you have to. And sometimes you take that that time alone and take that as a uh, as a point of reward and respite. That's you not having to please or pleasure nobody else. That's you learning to love yourself, pamper yourself, take care of yourself so that that way when you get with somebody else, you be able to sit down with them and say, you know what, I appreciate you. I appreciate spending time with you. You make my life richer. You make my life better, but you don't make my life. And that's the difference between where Cody and uh, where Christine and Mary were. And I think that that's the big problem that I have with uh with Mary's situation is that she got caught up in a way that she can't escape the situation. And no matter how much she tries to get out, even when she talks about trying to get some kind of freedom, she can't find that freedom because she's always having to deal with Cody and Cody's sitting right there. And then he makes her feel guilty about the promise that she made and the life that she could have had and the things that she had planned for her life to be a certain way, which is also one of the craziest things to me too is that she's so pressed about the life that she planned to have that she doesn't see the life that she does have nor does she try to accentuate and improve upon the life that she has you know things don't oftentimes things don't work the way you plan for them to work out work themselves out yeah no home in her own name yeah but the uh, oh I don't I don't get too far afield. Cause this thing be like four o'clock in the morning. Like this dude is crazy. <laughs> uh Grace. He looks at it as an opportunity. Yeah. Cody does look at his kids as an opportunity, that's true. Uh Kathy Farron, Cody can't see a man, he is a father. Oh, it's like, yeah. I think Cody's also battling uh, his own relationship and his own demons with his father and his relationship with his dad. Like you, there is a point where you become your parent. And I think Cody is actually becoming his dad because it's my understanding that the two of them had a very difficult relationship, uh, between Cody and his father. And then Cody is expressing, he's basically become his dad where he's having a very difficult with his sons, difficult relationship with his sons because he can't allow his sons to grow into their own, even his daughters. Like he doesn't spend time with his daughters to allow them to grow into their own people. And that's one of the problems I've always had with uh, like Cody always trying to pretend that like he's this manly man who's going to keep all the dudes away from your daughter. The best way you can keep the wrong kind of guy from your daughter is to give a good example of her, what a good man looks like. So that that way, when she's out looking for men, she know what a damn good man looks like because she had one at home helping to raise her. But in Cody's case, like if you're never around, what you're teaching your daughters, what he's teaching his stepdaughters, that you get to treat your wife however you want to treat them. And your wife is always supposed to be right there to, to uh, suck it suck it up. So you can do whatever you want to do. You can go out and pursue the people that you want to pursue. You can uh, treat them however you want to treat them. And they always have to be there and make you happy because their life is geared toward them, your happiness. And if you're teaching your daughters that, you're not teaching your daughters to be fulfilled. You're not teaching them to find their own happiness. So when they go out and they start meeting these knucklehead ass dudes and they start bringing them to the house, you can only threaten so many people because when push them down the shove, you can't protect people from themselves. So when these girls grow up and they start making their own choices and you didn't give them the tools to be able to make good choices for themselves, then you are actually... Uh, just as guilty as the guys who are going to be taking advantage of them because you set them up to where you prime them perfect so that they can be in the way of some of these guys who are going to take advantage of them and use them and mistreat them, especially when you send them out there super naive. And I don't know about y'all, but when I was watching that last episode, I'm sorry, I will keep bouncing all over the place. But when I was watching that last episode and that little girl was out there talking about this boy came from out of state, and she met him in college and she been kind of talking and flirting with him. I'm like, she about to catch something. She about to catch a D. <laughs> gonna throw a D up at her. Like, you better watch it. You know what I mean? Because if she's not ready and she doesn't know how to deal with dudes 
and you don't have that conversation, not just the conversation, keep your purity, not that bullshit. Like I'm sitting there talking about love yourself, respect yourself, take care of yourself. You are a prize. You are valuable. You have to make sure that you are protecting yourself. The first rule, you know, the first rule to baseball, there's no crying in baseball. Bullshit. The first rule in baseball is protect yourself. The first rule to any sport is always protect yourself. And if you're not teaching your daughter how to protect herself, then you send her, you sending her out there as a lamb to meet with a bunch of wolves to discuss what we're going to have for dinner. That's all you doing. You setting her up. You're setting her up. And if you, if you sit up there and you want to talk about like daddy issues, like you have your daughters, I won't say half your daughters. Most of your daughters don't even have a relationship with you because you mistreated them most of their lives or neglected them most of their lives. And then you want to sit there and wonder why they'll have problems that they have with the guys that they have. They come, they come into their lives. To be honest with you, it's a miracle that Madison and, uh, and Aspen and McKelty have found guys that when well, McKelty, I don't know, Tony is a little, I don't know, Tony sometimes, but, but, um, they, they married these decent dudes. I'm impressed. And I think that a big part of that is that they had strong foundational support from their moms. And I credit their moms with their good decisions as far as the guys that they're involved with. And maybe you being, you know, Cody's one upside is that by Cody being involved with these girls, the way he's involved with them and not dealing with them, you know, they use that as a hard lesson. The moms use that as a hard lesson. Like, yeah, your dad ain't coming around. Dad, you don't come around. See you. He don't never spend no time with you. Yeah, you know, when you get somebody, I want you to find somebody who do you a little better, baby. Don't get nobody like that. Okay. So, I mean, that, that might have been a conversation. But she's talking crap about me and she's taking the kids away. Now, I mean, <laughs> you took the kids away from yourself. But at the same time, maybe the best thing you did was not be around these little girls, because, you know, I I don't want to I don't want to talk about uh, Robin's kids too much, but because they kids, but I, I'm just saying, like I was not I was not excited when they were trying to tell a cutesy story about how this girl met this college boy. I was not excited. I was like, oh, that's lovely. I'm like, you better watch that little girl, because because I don't know if she's ready. <laughs> Especially my man came from out of town. He might know. And that's the thing, too, when you put your kids on TV. And like I said, I've worked in a film and, I, you know, I've worked with some pretty big people. And uh, I've had opportunities where people will say, James, how, how do you get your kids involved with uh, uh, movies or TV or, you know, da, 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 get them agent managers, so on and so forth. And I always took the position that you have to be very careful about, you know, introducing your kids to these types of situations. Cause a lot of times you can find your kids in adult situations with adult people who don't respect the fact that they children. And when you put your kids out there on these TV shows, whether it's reality shows, you know, even scripted stuff, you can be putting them in, in harm's way because people will recognize them and try to use them based on the fact that it's an easy way for them to get noticed or notoriety because they start dating them and they get on the show. So, I mean, I, I would be concerned about that. Like, I would be concerned with anybody who started dating some of these younger kids that they might be trying to work their way onto the show, much like Robin did. Oops. Sorry, I said that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Oops. He said it. Yes, he did. All right, we're going to go ahead and keep it moving on the uh, next clip. Let's see what the next clip is. Cause I he said, don't you understand, Mary? That And I felt my heart like really speeding up because I'm like, but you promised, you know? Yeah. He promised, he promised me forever. He promised forever. Yeah, he did. And the crazy thing is, is that promises don't mean anything. Yeah, Aspen and Isabel are the love, most level-headed kids. Maddie's pretty level-headed too, though. But uh, he, he, he promised you. 
And I can understand, like, even like I said, I understand that that can be difficult because when you're with somebody long term and you make promises to each other and you've committed so much of your life to that person for them to later turn around and say that they've changed their mind and they want to move on, that could be a hard thing to hear. However, the one thing I will say about that, which is, you know, it's 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 hard to hear and it's it's low, it's a hard pill to swallow to some degree. The same way you make promises every day to be with somebody, you promise somebody you're gonna be with them, it's a matter of you keeping that promise every day. And this is where you not taking people for granted comes in. When you decide that you're gonna be with somebody. You don't want to take that person for granted. So every day you have to remember to yourself that even though this person has promised that they would promise me that they would love me forever, be with me forever, and we have a commitment with each other, even though we have that promise, I have to commit that every day I'm going to fulfill that promise that I have to that person. That's the other part that nobody ever really focuses on when I listen to some of these commentaries. Like as far as... uh. You know, he made promises. Yes, he promised that he would love you every day, but the promise has to be the commitment of every day you're reaffirming your commitment to one another. Because every day you wake up, you have a choice. Every day you wake up, you can say, you know what, this shit ain't working out for me, I'm out. And that's your decision, that's your choice. You could do that and you would be fine with doing that. You would be fine in doing that. You know, and and as much as I would like to say that Cody's an asshole for leaving the OG3 and dragging him out, to be honest with you, on one hand, yeah, he's an ass for dragging him out, but he has every right to decide that he wants to do something different. On the other side of that, though, the flip side of that same coin, these women are so much better off with him making the decisions that he made. Hello, when when he got with Robin, one of the hardest things Christine went through was the fact that he got with Robin and he basically abandoned her and her children. That was one of the hardest things Christine went through. But possibly one of the happiest days of her life was because she went through that with Cody, she found a man who fulfills her in a way that Cody couldn't even imagine or even touch fulfilling her. And I I don't just mean in the boudoir, you nasty minded people, you you my kind of people though. <laughs> I don't just mean with the with the bedroom gymnastics. I'm talking about somebody who genuinely looks forward to coming home to her. She never would have had that had Cody kept his promise to her. She never would have had the opportunity to be with somebody who when Yo, she goes out to dinner with him. He orders the big bowls of nachos. And he said, girl, you eat the hell out of them nachos. Matter of fact, get them nachos. Let's get back to this hotel room. I'm feeling a little sleepy. <laughs> I want to go back to the hotel room and get some rest. <laughs> it's four in the afternoon. I don't give a damn, girl. Let's go. You know what I mean? Get them nachos. I ain't playing. <laughs> You know what I mean? She deserves that. And to be honest with you, if he kept his promise, she never would have been able to enjoy her life as it is today. So from what from one regard, it's a good thing that Cody is the, the dude that he is, that she can be happy and she found happiness. I only hope. And I think that Janelle is starting to date somebody. I think Mary has somebody now. But I only hope that even if they don't find anybody, because I don't even want to just put it on, I hope they find somebody and be happy because they deserve it. They deserve to be happy regardless of whether they find somebody or not. They deserve to be happy in themselves, be content amongst themselves, and be satisfied with who they are. And if they find themselves by themselves for the rest of their life, if they are happy with their company because they enjoy being with themselves, then God bless them. I say more, more power to them. To hell with it. But what you don't, it's better that you happy by yourself than to be miserable with company. And that's what I see with Cody. Like if you guys are sitting around and you jealous of one another every day, he's coming out of one person's house and you mad that he coming out of this one's house and he going in that one and you cussing both of them because you don't like his situation and you spend out of a, a, a seven day week, you might spend six to uh, five to six days of that seven days hating two other people and miserable 
because he's spending his time with somebody else. And for two days, one or two days, you get to be happy to hell with that. Those odds are terrible. That's a shitty situation. So I'd rather see these ladies be happy seven days a week by themselves, living their best life, than sitting there miserable, waiting for Cody to shake his dumb ass over across the way or find his way over to their house so he can ignore their kids. Right? So for me, him not keeping his promise, like I said, don't have this man to keep telling you that he don't want you. And more to the point, have the pride and dignity within yourself, especially as much as these women sit around and talk, Mary, sit around and talk about, I'm a strong, independent woman. Be strong and be independent, dang it. The hell with him. If he doesn't want to spend time with you, he doesn't appreciate you. He doesn't appreciate all that you gave for him, sacrificed for him, and you did for him. And he look at you and ask you what's next. And he can't, and he's counting on his fingers all the times that he had to give up something that he wanted to do to come over there and spend time with you and make sacrifices to be with you. Then the hell with that. You can keep your sacrifices. You can take your sacrifices and sit on them. Because I'd rather be by myself. I would rather be alone. And, that, and that's just the way it works. So, <laughs> not your family anymore, you're right? <laughs> not your cheese. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, look, look, Christine, I don't know, man. Dude messed up. Like, he got rid of the, he got rid of the bank in Janelle. Mary, she was the, uh, the partner in crime because she helped to orchestrate the family and try to put everything together. She was the controller. She was the one, like, basically the enforcer for the family for him. You know, he could rely on her to cuss the other women out. Then you had Christine, who was basically taking care of the kids, the event plan and all that. And he blew all that stuff. And he didn't appreciate none of it. So, no, you don't deserve to have any of it. And instead of you sitting around crying about what he promised you or he said he would give you, thank, be thankful. How many times have you been in a relationship with somebody and you thought you swore for God that, Oh, this dude, I love him so much. Oh, we're going to get married one day. Or, you know, oh, this young lady. Oh, she's hot as hell. Too hot to try it. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to be with her forever. And then something happened. You guys break up. You heartbroken. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. What am I going to do? And then you see him out like two, three years later. You see him out at a club or a bar. You see him walking down the street in the supermarket. Like, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> I must have been all the way out my damn mind with this one. What was I doing? <laughs> Why in the world would I do that to myself? <laughs> or you try, you know, you try to go out with somebody and they don't want to go out with you. And then like maybe two, three years later, you'd be like, oh, I ducked the bullet on that one. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes you got to thank God for that. Boy, I'm telling you. You be looking at him like, thank goodness, Lord, I know I was praying for it, but you knew better. <laughs> you put no in the heart and set me free because <laughs> I'd have been caught up in the foolishness. And, and, you know, sometimes that's the way it works. Sometimes you have to go through some, through some things in order for you to understand what it is you actually have. And in this case, like I said, for Christine, she had to go through this bad relationship for her to find a relationship that was worthy of who she is as a person. And it's a hard way to go. You can't really see it when you're going through it. When you're in it, it's hard to see it. But when you look back on it, it becomes a lot clearer. Because the weirdest thing is, and this is the, uh, like, you know, not to get too preachy, but the weirdest thing is that when you pray for strength, you, you're not given strength. You're given opportunities to be strong. When you pray for wisdom, you aren't granted wisdom because, you know, bam, all of a sudden you're smarter. You're given opportunities where you can learn and you can start to develop the mentality where you can develop that wisdom. And when you're praying for these good relationships, sometimes you have to experience some bad ones. But the secret to the sauce is knowing when to let them bad ones go. That's part of the lesson is knowing that you are valuable enough that you don't have to participate in the dumb shit. You don't have to keep carrying it around. You can say, you know what? Got all I need to learn from this. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Take something on your way out. <laughs> Take some parking gifts with you. <laughs> and just keep it pushing. You know, and that's where I feel uh, 
Mary's kind of like she has to learn that she is worthy and she can do better than where she is. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Who want to wake up next to that clown? Crow boss. <laughs> herpy lips. Yeah, they do got them little herpy lips. Uh, they spread that around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rob was trying to be an actress. But you can tell from the way she does it, she wasn't very good. So it's not, it's no wonder that she's not uh, popular. Oh, no, I didn't see. Cody did a, did a podcast on Mormon, Mormonism Live. I can see that because I think ultimately my whole thing with Cody, and I'm, I'm going to do a live. I got to get the clips together and I'll do a live on this. But I think that uh, there's a point where I'd often kind of intonated that Cody had bigger dreams than just being on TV. When Cody got on uh, Sister Wives, I think Cody took a position that he wanted to get on Sister Wives so that he could become the pinnacle or the ideal polygamist. He could be the go-to polygamist, right? When people think of polygamy, they think of Cody Brown. And he could become the leader in that form and fashion. It would also elevate him within his church. Uh, when he was talking about moving to Las Vegas, he was supposed to be, you know, trying to get everybody to come to Vegas to come to his church, which is basically worship with him, which by de facto would make him the leader of the Las Vegas branch of the AUB, the Apostol Apostolic United Brethren, which sounds cultish as hell, the Brethren. Uh, so that was a thing. There was also a point where, as I'm going to express or I'll explore in my uh, live I have to put together, where I'll talk about Cody's political uh, aspirations where he specifically said that he wanted to go back to Utah when they were first talking about selling the houses in Vegas and he came up with that, that bullshit presentation. He said at that point that he wanted to run for office. He wanted to be a politician. In fact, I knew that that's what he wanted to do when he was down there with the Dargers and he was sitting there saying that, um, watching Joe Darger get all that attention and coming up and speaking and Darger screwed him over because he had Christine come up and give a speech and Christine, she killed it. Like she killed it. Like she did an excellent job for the speech. And I think she did a better job than Cody Brown ever could have did. But Cody had that look in his eye where he was very jealous and envious of the fact that Christine was asked to get up and do the speech and he couldn't get up and say some words. Uh, give a shout out to uh, Blue Heavenly Leonard with the $5 Super Chat. Love your channel and wisdom. I hope a lot of young people watch it. Uh, watch it. I could use, could have used your insight 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, though. I, I know what you mean. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I hope some, I, I hope young people do watch it because I think that, you know, these kind of conversations could go a long way with them, especially when you have so much of the bullshit that they're passing out as far as male wisdom and male insight in the red pill community, where they're telling young men that the number one driver for their success, the drivers for their uh, relationship values and so on and so forth are based and rooted in money and how much funds they can put together. And the idea that if they have enough money, they can get women and treat those women any way that they want to, or more to the point, mistreat those ladies, uh, just simply because they have the advantage of having a couple nickels to rub together. And what that does is that sets them on a trajectory where they're going to have miserable lives with these small minded people that they're going to couple themselves with. And I disagree wholeheartedly with that. If you want to, if you want to find a good woman, you don't find a good woman by flaunting your wallet in front of her. What you're going to find is somebody who's interested in you for your money. So you kind of get out of it what you put into it. Uh, big shout out to Sister Knight. I love that name, Sister Knight. I like your uh, profile too. Uh, $10 Super Chat. Keep being a masculine voice of reason and I'm going to always give the HBO special. There you go. Thank you. That help a brother out special. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, just to, just to kind of cap that off, like I think that there is a lot of uh, folks who are spending a lot of time. And I, and I even say that like, because Sister Wives for me is kind of a jump off point where I like to talk about some of these issues that I see, not just in 
polygamous relationships or reality TV shows, but we can root some of these. And so some of these lessons and some of these issues and, and, and things that we see on the screen into our own personal lives or even hopefully help our kids out or help out young folks who might be going through these types of problems. Because what uh, Mary's story isn't just unique to Mary because she's a polygamist who was left by a man who she was married to and decided to go with another younger woman. Monogamists go through this thing all the time. There are monogamous women who get left, uh, you know, be in a relationship with a guy, <laughs> you know, work full jobs, get him through medical school or law school to do graduate, get himself a partnership or start a practice. Then all of a sudden he starts screwing the secretary or the uh, nurse and say that, you know, the wife that helped him build his whole life up and help get him through school and, put him in a position where he could be successful. She no longer meets his needs and she ain't for some reason a person that he needs in order for him to keep his life going. And, you know, and he doesn't keep his promise or he promises her that once he graduates, uh, <laughs> big shout out to C forever. <laughs> Five dollars super chat. James, the smooth voice can crack me up and put me to sleep. <laughs> I love me to sleep. Awesome. But, uh, you know, they don't keep their promise because in some cases they'll promise that, you know, you help me get through school then and reach my dream and my goal that I'm going to help you do the same and you can take off from work and you can start pursuing your dream. And then when they finish school and they start working, all of a sudden they ready to be out because, you know, they've got theirs and now it's on you to go get yours. So that's crazy. Ty with the, with the super chat. Thank you so much, Ty. I appreciate you. I see, girl. But, you know, so that's something that can happen. And I understand it, that can happen. And it can be hard. But again, just because you hit a stumbling block or you hit an obstacle doesn't mean you have to stop. It doesn't mean that your, your life might be changed. Your life might be different. But it doesn't mean that your life is destroyed. Things oftentimes don't work out the way you plan for them to work out. So, I mean, that's just kind of where I am with the whole married thing. And I don't mean, like I said, I don't want to disrespect anybody. And I try to make light of it, but I think a lot of people go through that with Mary. There was something else that I wanted to talk about with regard to that. I can't remember what it was. Uh, big shout out to uh, Laura Le Lozano. Okay, Laura Lozano. James, we need to convince TLC to get Suki out of <laughs> the tell-alls and get you, in other words, to interview the Browns. Bring the receipts. That's right. I'll bring the receipts. Uh, and that's why they won't let me do it. Because if you gave me, this is me just sitting there by myself, my little computer, barely computer literate. If you give me a whole team, Jack. Oh, I, oh, I smoke them. Uh, I'll be cooking them. They'd be uh, Cody Cookouts. Cody Cookums. <laughs> Craft and Mayhem and more. Thank you for the super chat. $2 super chat. Appreciate it. Look, but I mean, all it comes down to is. Like I said before, I think TLC is at a precipice and they have a decision to make with regard to even the shows and how the shows are being held out. If you can expand it and make it better, bring us up to date with the storyline, give us something that we can sink our teeth into as viewers, or you can continue to disrespect us by dragging it out, having uh, bullshit tell-alls where you have people come on and tell us stuff that is contradictory to the things that we watched happen during the course of the season. And at minimum, if they're going to try to change the story or say that the story needs a little more context, at least present the, the counterpoint of saying that this is the way the audience saw it and this is their understanding, explain why that's wrong. If you're not going to do that, you're disrespecting us. That's my opinion. Oh, but let's talk about there was something else that, that Cody had said that uh, Mary had said. And I wanted to touch on it. And I forgot what it was. I'm telling you, that, man, you be forget. I forget stuff. Get to talking and I get lost. I'm sorry, y'all. You, some of y'all like this dude is burnt steak. Oh yeah, burnt steak. Yeah. Speaking of which, just as a side note, has anybody ever noticed that when Cody cook out, this dude burns everything on the grill? He was like, yeah, we got some chi got some chicken and some packets. Like, how the, how, how um, I'm sorry, I almost cussed. I guess I can't cuss. This is the live. Fuck it. But, but, but how do you burn chicken packets? 
Because you put some, like you either put butter or some kind of uh, lemon or something in the package so that you can create the steam effect. There's no way <laughs> you should be able to burn these things unless you leave them on the grill for too long. Like there's no, they're, they're almost burn proof. Especially when you're operating a ga gas grill. This dude isn't even working with charcoal. I'm a charcoal man. I don't know about y'all. I, I have family from the South. I grew up up North, but every summer we used to go down South charcoal. So I, I got the stick burner. I got the wood burner charcoal. Okay. And I, and I'll smoke with, uh, logs, wood logs. And I'm out there. I'm the dude that's out, you know, cooking brisket and I'm up and down, up and down, up and down, making sure my heat's regulated. So I know a little bit about the barbecue. I love the barbecue, right? Barbecue is actually biblical. I don't get, I don't get sacrilegious, but it is, it's a spiritual thing. You barbecue some meat ain't nothing like barbecue food. <laughs> That's why they say the cookout. You know, if you get invited to the cookout, go. Right? But this dude, every time he's out cooking something on the grill, he burned that shit up. I've never seen Cody cook on the grill and it be okay. He burned up the chicken. I should put I should have put together some clips. He burned up the chicken. That time he had the uh people over from UNLV. He burned up all them steaks. <laughs> then he tried to cook steaks for the uh, the kids when the wives went all, they all went, I think, to Seattle. And he burnt up the, like, he went outside, he pulls the hood of the grill up, and then, like, the whole thing is just a disco inferno up in that jungle, just smoking fire everywhere. I'm like, this dude should never cook outside unless he has a fire extinguisher present. Because he burns everything. Like, if you go to Cody's house for the cookout, just prepare to eat the Cody Co the Cody flavored charcoal because that's what he's serving. This dude don't know temperatures for shit. Like, he just looks at the grill and be like, if it's black, it's done. <laughs> this guy, he is a terrible cook. I I'm surprised, like, when them kids went away, that's why, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to talk too reckless, but dude, whoo. Ah, this guy, man, he cannot cook worth a damn. And for those who don't know, when you out there and you you cook it on the grill, you're going to have some flare-ups. It's going to come up. Just close the hood. Usually you close the hood down, the fire kind of squelch down. Unless your, your stuff is just, your fire is too hot and it's just going right into the fire. <laughs> He, in which case, you got to get there and start moving some shit around. This dude just, he don't care. He just go outside and be like, that's a fire. <laughs> I'm surprised he's still, especially, usually he'd have to tie his hair back in some kind of ponytail because my man, the way he, the fires be high, I'm surprised he still got eyebrows. Maybe that's what happened to Robin's eyebrows. She was out there when he was cooking out and burned them eyebrows clean off her face and she been painting them on ever since. Right? Anyways, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get too crazy. But uh, yeah, the next thing I wanted to talk about was Maddie. Let's talk, let's get into this Maddie situation. Have you heard from Maddie at all? No, um, huh. I do not know what happened, but during the breakup with Christine, um, Maddie stopped reaching out to me. Might've been COVID or I have no idea what was going on, but she, she quit reaching out to me. That's so stupid. I ain't COVID or something. I don't know what's going on, but she stopped reaching out to me. <laughs> Why is this dude always blaming COVID? COVID didn't cause everything. <laughs> yeah, I got a flat tire. Must have been the COVID. <laughs> yeah, I was walking down the street in the rain yesterday. Forgot to bring the dog in. <laughs> got wet. Must have been COVID. Yeah, what is going on? Oh, all of a sudden you don't speak to your daughter because of COVID. Christine left and COVID. And, like you got, these are your built-in excuses. No matter what happened, is Christine or is COVID. The reason why your daughter doesn't talk to you, first of all, the reason why your daughter don't talk to you is because you've been fucking with her mom. You've been dissing her mom. Janelle is her mama. I don't know if, you, like, you, sometimes you lose focus of it because they really don't talk about it during the show. But Janelle is her mama. Janelle is her mom, and you've been screwing her mom over. Her mom is concerned that she don't have nothing to her name, and you don't think she shared that with her daughter, that she's worried about it, that he, 
Then Cody leaves. He comes by. They get in an argument. And, he, and he, her younger sister, Savannah, Savannah, sorry, Savannah, listen to me. I'm talking French now. Savannah. Sav, 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 I'm about to call her Savannah. Uh, I did call her Savannah. That's her name. Did Savannah, you don't think that Savannah told Maddie that she hasn't talked to her father? That since before Christmas and it's like the middle of March or something and he hasn't called her or try to contact her or push up on her? You don't think she's heard those stories? I'm surprised you're still talking to Logan. I'm surprised you're still talking to Logan. There's a reason why I don't think Cody's talking about uh about uh cause he cause he's still mad at Garrison and Gabe, but there's a reason why he don't talk about Hunter no more. Because I think Hunter might be pissed at him because of how you treating her mama. That's why she's not talking to you. And there was one time he was all pressed about Caleb, her uh, Madison's husband. That, that shit was creepy as hell. He, like, cause, cause like I said, there was a couple times, and I'm not even trying to front on him because you know he might have a different orientation or whatever the case may be. I'm not insulting him by saying that he do. I'm just saying that to me it's kind of peculiar that the only time I see my man crying is when dudes leave him. I'm just saying. I know he love with Rob, and I know that's his soulmate and stuff. But sometimes maybe Robin's willing to do things, you know, to assert herself in the boudoir that the other wives wouldn't think about doing. That's why he like her. Maybe it's not the pencil box. Maybe she got a strap on pencil. I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? Like, because it's just weird to me. Like, when uh, the dude Brad, he left, he cried like a baby. Oh, Brad was leaving the wedding. I cried. I was so upset. Your daughter was in the hospital. Almost died. Yeah, her mom got really upset about that. What? <laughs> what the? F what? <laughs> and some I got smashed out. Somebody smashed me out a little bit because they're like, James, you, you're a bit feeding into toxic masculinity because you won't allow him to be uh, sensitive or emotional. I don't give a shit about that. I don't care if he's emotional. Like you got might have a buddy who you cool with. You don't get to see him as much, and you upset that he's leaving, or you don't get to hang out with him like you want to. That's cool. But at the same time, when I balance it out, if you're an emotional dude, be an emotional dude. If you saying that you upset that your buddy ain't coming around, and you cry because of that, then when you find out that your daughter almost died because she she had kidney failure and she was a baby then you should be upset about that. I'm just saying. Like if you won't cry about one, if you don't cry, if you don't never cry, then when your daughter gets sick, you don't cry. Okay, fine, cool. I mean, not everybody express themselves the same way. I get that, right? But it's just weird to me that anytime, like when Brett, Brett was leaving, you cried because Brett had to go. When you were leaving in Madison, you were leaving Las Vegas, going to Arizona, he didn't cry and hug Madison. He cried and hugged Caleb. It was weird to me. When he was going to the uh, the the wedding festivities and he was sitting there chatting and talking to Mitch and he was in there with the fellas and he was giddy as a schoolgirl. <laughs> you know, and they were wearing the kilts. And I have nothing against kilts. It was, you know what I mean? I can wear a damn kilt. I don't care. Your kilt, kilts are kind of cool. Oh, big shout out to Rochelle and Jay with the two dollar super chat. Dead <laughs> strap on pencil box. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kills, kills are kind of cool. I'm not even mad about kills. Hell, you if you in shape and you you put on a kilt, you a scary looking fella. You know what I mean? Forget that. But <laughs> Cody, he get his kilt. Everybody else look hot. They look like they look dope with their kilts on. Uh, bitch, that dude look like he was he looked official. His, his groomsmen, them dudes looked official. Cody, he had a buck tight kilt. His shit was all high. He looked like a schoolgirl. <laughs> he looked like he was in Catholic school. You know what I mean? Like the girls say, because back in, I went to Catholic school. For those who don't know, they're uninitiated. When you were in Catholic school, they used to tell the girls that if you have a skirt, your skirt had to be two fingers above your knee. Because Cody's skirt was about three palms. Like, he had his hand stacked <laughs> on his knee. That's just, his skirt was high as hell. Cody's skirt was so high, he would have been mad at McKelty for wearing that same skirt. Talk to me. Now, I'm sorry. I'm getting kind of crazy. Some folks are going to be pissed at me. I, I apologize. 
<laughs> you took it too far. This is what my daughter said. She's like, you're going to get canceled, daddy, because you, you, sometimes you go too far. <laughs> I apologize. I'm, I know I'm out of pocket sometimes. I'm just saying. <laughs> my man be crying. Like, when the news leave, like, like his daughter leave, all of a sudden he's not talking to Madison. Is he upset that he's not talking to Madison? He's upset because she took Caleb with him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Cody's a different dude, man. He's a different kind of cat. Different kind of cat, man. <laughs> I love everybody, though. Uh, all right. So, so that was Cody's whole thing about uh, Madison. Saying, like, and the whole thing is, again, what kind of dad? What kind of dad? Oh, yeah. I don't know why she stopped calling me. Like, we was talking. We talking pretty good. And everything is fine. Then all of a sudden she stops calling you and you don't know why. I would I would want to know why my daughter's not mad at me to the point where she don't want to talk to me no more. So that's a phone call. And if she don't pick up the phone, I'm getting on a plane. I'm coming. So make sure you <laughs> I guess in Cody's case, you know, I mean you don't want to you know barbecue no food and take it to her, because maybe that's why she don't talk to you. Last time you made the whole family sick, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but you get on the plane, you go down to North Carolina, you knock on the door and say, what's up? Why are we not talking to me? Why you stop calling me? Why you stop talking to me? If there's a problem because I'm no longer married to Christine, that's between me and Christine. That ain't got nothing to do with me and you and our relationship. I want to see you. I want to see my grandkids. I want to see be part of your life and I want to be part of your family. That's what you say as a father. You don't be okay with your daughter not talking to you and you not knowing why. Now, if you're okay with your daughter not talking to you, you know, uh, sometimes I will say this. Sometimes, sometimes people overlook the fact that parents are people too, right? And by parents are people too, what I mean is the biggest problem I've always had with uh, people who stop, try to cut their parents off because they say something or do something they don't like and cut them off, uh, you know, usually the parent is trying to give them some good advice. The kid wants to take the, <laughs> do what they want to do. And they say, well, I ain't talking to them because they tell me I can't do what I want to do. And screw them because they don't understand my life. I'm grown. And everybody grown up until the time the bill comes. <laughs> then all of a sudden, daddy, I need some money. <laughs> right? So if you go cut your parent off, you got to understand that your parents are people too. And sometimes you have to respect the fact that they have feelings too. So, okay, fine. Cody's feelings might be hurt. But then you got to ask the next question. Why are Cody's feelings hurt? And this is where I would get into tr trouble at the tell-all. Why are your feelings hurt? My feelings are hurt because I was disrespected during COVID because I had COVID rules. And these people wouldn't follow the rules. Okay. They wouldn't follow the rules. What were the COVID rules they wouldn't follow? They wouldn't follow the rules where I was the only one. <laughs> Somebody said many killed. <laughs> That's <like> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but the rules they wouldn't follow was he was telling them that they could no longer see anybody but him. That was the rule that they were supposed to be following. When he was talking about Christine always going on vacation, Janelle's always going on vacation, the vacations, quote unquote, they were going to, they were going to see their kids. Christine was going down to Utah, going to Utah to see Aspen, Mitch, and she was going to go see... Um, uh, uh, the other kids who are in uh, uh, McKelty and, and, and her husband, Tony, and the baby. She's going to go see her granddaughter. That's not her going out. I could see if she was going out to Vegas or she was going down uh, to Miami or something just so she could hang out and go on a booze cruise during COVID. Then I'd be like, yeah, that's selfish. But if she's going down to see her kids and going down to see her family, and you're telling her the only way she can maintain a relationship with you is, oh, good night, um, Ivana Bula. Good night. I understand. I understand. Everybody, nobody. <laughs> I'm not forcing you, Ivana. But uh, thank you for coming. Um, but if they're going down to see their families and they're going down to see their kids, let them go see their kids. I mean, maybe if you let the brothers and sisters see each other, Robin's kids, or even Janelle and Christine's kids, if you let them see each other, you would probably still have wives now. 
and your family would probably still be together. Just saying, bro. So that's the, the thing that they're talking about. So when he said that they ignored the COVID rules, part of ignoring the COVID rules was when Janelle went down to be with Madison, who had to sit with her child to get the surgery that she needed. That was one of the COVID rules that she broke. So yeah, Madison might feel a certain kind of way because that's her child. And I know you don't give a shit about your adult children, but your adult children care about themselves and they care about their kids. And I know you don't care about your kids, but you can't be mad at, mad at Madison for caring about her daughter. And I, let's listen to, uh, real quick what Janelle had to say with regard to this whole thing about uh, Cody not talking to Madison. This is what, what Janelle had. She doesn't call him because of his behavior lately. She's like, I don't, I don't know what to do with him. I don't know who this guy is. So she has to consider her children. She has to consider the stability of what they see or perceive as a grandfather. There's a lot of things at play here. It's not just Maddie not calling him. And that's the whole point. Oh, uh, just real quick, Rochelle J. I'm in uh, the Eastern EST time zone. So I don't know if that helps you guys. Uh, so like New York time or whatever would be my time. But if because I, I, I didn't realize that some people might get. I have to try to figure a way to be able to post the time that I'll be on. And it'll be transferred to the time zones of the people who are watching or looking for the time. Or they're looking for the uh, the live. So I'll try to figure that out. Like I said, I'm new to this whole game. And we're going to get it on the road. I'm telling you, we're going to have all kinds of stuff. This is my first one. And hopefully it's going good. You guys are enjoying it. Um, so far, nothing could, catastrophic has happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what I was waiting for. Because anytime you do something new, something bad always happens. It's just you have to build it into the, you know, the try. <laughs> but when I listen to that, one of the things that she said was, <laughs> hilariously, Janelle said that Madison was thinking about or had to consider Cody's behavior. So, so the whole idea of like Cody always said, it's their behavior. that That's what gets my favor, the behavior. <laughs> so I guess he fell out of favor with Madison because of his behavior. So screw him. But when I look at it, one of the funniest things about it is, is that Madison is essentially saying, I have to look out for myself and I have to be responsible for my children. And if he is here acting weird and funny and fricked up because he's so upset about COVID and he's so upset about the COVID rules that he can't conduct himself, then I have to take that into consideration. Let me take a break one second. I'll be right back. I have to do something real quick. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to blow my nose. I, you ever, it's that weird time of year where you kind of have a cold, but you don't have a cold. Like, that's where I'm at now. Like, I don't know what the hell is going on. Like, I just had the flu not too long ago, so I was out for like a week, almost a week, doing my videos, and I was upset about that. But then I thought I was better, but apparently not. So I have like the recurring flu. I don't know. So I'm sniffling and pushing and, and, and dipping and jobbing. But anyway, back to the show. All right, so... When I was talking about Madison, one of the things that I respect about Madison, and this is why I always kind of like Madison or I always kind of respect Madison, she has a pretty good head on her shoulders. And the way that she approaches things is, is like her mom, very logically. And so if Cody is in a situation between him and Robin where they're kind of vacillating between everything is Christine's fault and they destroyed the family and the family ain't together and and, and I won't die in the COVID and I was so sick and oh God, oh God, and all that craziness and everything in the world is about COVID and how he suffered. Like he's the only person in the world who has suffered through COVID. I had COVID at least twice. At least twice. And it was very unpleasant. I was not happy. But I didn't destroy my family. 
<laughs> I mean, I had the sniffles. I felt like shit. I, you know what I mean? You, there's a point. There's a point where you think you're going to die. Like, you think this is the, the end of the room. Like, damn. You know, everything I've been through in my life is going to end like this. <laughs> and a sniffle. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it just doesn't seem possible. <laughs> but COVID was real and COVID was kicking ass. So I'm very fortunate that I was able to get through it. And I'm not even making fun of it because I'm just happy I made it. But I do make fun of Cody's situation because even as sick as Cody may or may not have been, because I don't know how sick he was. He say he was on death's door. Uh, you know, some people are like, I was on death's door. I sneezed three times and I thought it was awful. Like, you know what I mean? There's other people who go through some major shit and then they, they, they get up and they still have a smile on their face. So it's kind of hard to predict it that way. But the fact that, okay, you were on death's door you made it to the other side and you can't find any solace or happiness or joy in the fact that you almost died. You didn't die. So you just proceed to ruin your life and destroy your life as though you were dead. It's ridiculous to me. And the one thing that I will say about everybody involved in this situation, everybody kind of in the Brown situation is kind of operating on the, uh, the time has no arms. The clock has no no hands. Uh, point of view or perspective. Just meaning that everybody is pretending as though everybody's going to live forever. And you don't have to worry about, you know, maintenancing your relationships and dealing with one another. You just assume that one day when you're over the situation and you're ready, they'll be there and ready for you to sit down and have the conversation. And unfortunately, that's not the case. Like, you have to be very careful with how you do that. And I'm not just saying, like, for the kids dealing with Cody because Cody's not going to be here forever. I say that in reverse as well. There are a lot of parents. One of the most horrifying things as a parent is to have to bury your own child. But there are parents who do have to bury their own kids. I remember when I was a young man, you know, I had a, a cousin, Lisa. And, I, you know, rest in peace. She passed away and she died when I was, I was, I was young too. I think I was maybe about 17 and she died when she was like 23. So like she was just walking down the street, you know, she got off the bus. She was going to work and she had a full blowout. Like her heart blew out. I mean, like literally blew up in her chest. Like that thing that, um, she had a congenital issue, like, uh, John Ritter from uh, Three's Company. Old heads know I'm talking about young folks. Like, who the hell? John Ritter? What? <laughs> What's a John Ritter? But uh, he's a famous actor. He, he passed away the same way. Like, it just, you're, you're fine. And there's like a, just a genetic uh, issue with the, one of the valves. The valve tears loose. Your heart basically blows up in your chest. And you you sanguinate or you pass within, within moments. Right? One minute you hear, next moment you go on. And she was young, healthy, you know what I mean? She did sports when she was in high school. She was in relatively good shape. She just, you know, had that genetic issue. And that's one of the things that you have to look at when you when you dismiss people or you put people off or you assume that people, I'm not going to worry about this person or that person. And you just keep it pushing and you keep ignoring them. Or, you know, in Cody's case, he looks at Truly like you almost lost Truly. And yet and still, you could drive by that house every day and not think once about going, pulling into that driveway and asking for that child. You know, so you, so you know what it's like. And supposedly the reason why Robin, I know he says that Robin didn't enforce the COVID rules and she wasn't the reason for the COVID rules, but she was. And I can prove it because during one of the episodes, and I'll pull the tape if you need me to pull the tape, but there was a, a clip. And this is why they won't let me do the tell-all because I'll pull the clips. <laughs> but there was a... a a episode where they were talked about how Robin was concerned because Solomon had had a, a lung issue. She had described Robin had described it as Solomon having a lung problem when he was little. He had an issue with his lungs and he got really sick as a child, which made him compromised for COVID. And she was concerned that if people went out during COVID or, you know, interacted with him, he could, you know, get sick and not make it. And so she was a strong driver for it. And they eventually stopped talking. She stopped talking about it altogether. And she just pushed Cody out there to talk about it. But that was early on. But 
if he had all these situations that happened with his kids, Madison, she had an appendix out, or like her, uh, she had an emergency appendectomy. So you have all these situations where your kids get sick and you recognize the mortality of your children, but yet and still you can look in the faces of your children and say, well, I won't spend time with you because you're an asshole. You disagree with me. I don't like you because you don't follow my rules. Guess what? If you are a parent, I'm here to tell you, as a parent and as a person who was once a child and had parents of his own, I had very good parents. They're excellent parents. I had excellent, in my opinion, I had excellent parents. And I didn't do everything my parents wanted me to do. <laughs> I, I, I did whatever the hell I wanted to do. Okay? You, you will break rules. You will do shit that your parents don't agree with. That is life. That is part of growing up. I don't assume that my kids are going to do everything I want them to do. I certainly don't assume that they're going to make decisions that I want them to make. That, that would be folly. That would be foolish. And frankly, that would be stupid as hell if I expected them to do everything that I ever wanted them to do. That would be dumb as shit. So yeah, they're going to do things that you don't like. Get over it. Get the frick over it, dude. Okay? Your, 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 your sons, they went and meet these young ladies. Oh, Gabe and, and uh, Garrison, they, they want to go stack down, get their pencils wet. That's why I call That's why, and, and this is um, small on my part. This is part of the reason why I, I say what I say about Robin in the pencil box. I don't do it because I necessarily want to disrespect Robin. I do it as a shot to Cody because Cody annoyed the frick out of me. When and I, I, can I cuss? Y'all don't mind if I cuss. Hit a one if you don't mind me cussing too. If you don't want me to cuss, <laughs> because I'm I'm holding it back. But if the the thing that, that made me angry, Rochelle J with the five dollar super chat, code text assault to everyone who lost someone to COVID. Yeah, that's true. With his fetal position on a ninety nine fever crap. <laughs> if you're right, I was in the fetal position. You're right about that. It's insulting. There are people, and I and I and I, and I didn't want to point it out. Thank you, Rochelle J, uh, for super chatting and the, and the point. But I didn't want to point it out. But there were people who reached out to me on there. Some people writing the ones I haven't seen any twos yet, so we might be letting it loose. Um, there were people who wrote to me on uh, in some of the comment sections and my take comment sections because, like I said, I read them. And they were they were saying that they had lost people from COVID. And it's insulting. It is insulting that you're going to sit there and complain about, oh, I was at death's door because, you know, Robin didn't feel good. And I took her to the hospital and she's sitting there freaking having a whole goddamn conversation. Okay, we cussing. You know, sitting there having a whole fucking conversation, full breath, no, no hesitation, just talking in the hospital when you're supposed to be dying of COVID. Come on now. You ain't that sick. You ain't that sick. And Cody, oh, I should be in there with him because I want somebody to pay attention to me too. I don't know if a lot of people caught that. He was basically upset that Robin was in the uh, emergency room probably to get a freaking break. Like, Robin probably went to the emergency room like, I'm tired of dealing with this dude. Like, he's sick, I'm sick, and she, he wants me to take care of his ass. Who taking care of me? I'm taking care of the kids, and I'm taking care of this grown-ass baby. Right? So she probably was like, fuck it, I need a break. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to the emergency room. And so, <laughs> so when she gets to the emergency room, she's not in the emergency room because she got COVID. She's in there to get a fucking break. <laughs> it's like, I'm taking a break. <laughs> I need 10 minutes to myself without somebody asking me to get something or hand them something or, or come over. Like, you know what I mean? So he he's there talking about, oh, I'm sick and I need to be in the emergency room because I don't feel good. Like you're a, you're a loser, like like look I get it like and uh, the crazy thing is I uh, <laughs> as a guy I feel comfortable saying this, men when we get sick a lot of times as much as we talk about we the conquerors of the world when men get ill we a bunch of bitches like we sit up there and cry to women and be oh baby I'm so sick I don't feel good she'll be sick too and she had to go down and make you something to eat like it's crazy as hell. It's crazy as hell. Like I said, I, that's what I was talking about earlier with, with childbirth. That's how I know if the if men had to have babies, that'd be the end of the human race. 
Because the first time we caught morning sickness, we're like, oh, God, this is terrible. <laughs> who, who does this? Who does this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I can't eat anything. I smell everything. <laughs> Nobody in the world, the history of the world has ever been through this. Like <laughs> women are like, wait till like month two. <laughs> wait till the baby starts side kicking your bladder. Then you're gonna know what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Cody had a fever of 99. <laughs> the crazy part, I feel like I should go in there and try to get in the hospital too. Like, then they wasn't going to let you in there. So you can sit up there with Robin and look at her. Like, I don't know. This dude got me going. Like, I, I don't know. I don't want to get too crazy with y'all on the first time out. If I if I let the man slip too far, you'd be like, oh, I, this guy's a maniac. <laughs> but the whole thing is, just to wrap this up, the whole thing is, guys, look. When it comes to Madison, I respect Madison's position because you have to look out for your family. And you have to make sure everything is cool. At the same time, Madison is appreciative of the fact that <laughs> Madison is appreciative of the fact that uh, what is this? I love you. Takes on your show, your analogies, and your personalities. Thanks for what you do. Oh, thank you, Kate Bell, Belsey, five dollars super chat. Okay, guys, get your name right, Billsy. Did I get your name right, Kate Billsy? I don't want to disrespect anybody, but I appreciate that. Thank you. But the whole thing is, is that, <coughs> excuse me, that cold is keep trying to come back. You ever had that cold that just won't go away? It's just hanging on with his fingertips. Like, I'm trying to shake it. I'm trying to juke it. This thing is just, uh. And we're about to get like a cold front up here too. It's going to be bad. So we shall see. But I want you guys to keep an eye out for my uh, super chats. I'll get back to Madison in a bit. But keep an eye out for the Super Chats. I will be doing other Super Chats on different shows as well. Not Super Chats. Oh, so ridiculous. So, so ridiculous. I will be doing lives on other shows as well. So if you guys want to kick into those too. Like I said, with a lot of the stuff that I do, hopefully you guys understand by now that you don't necessarily have to watch the shows that I'll be uh, talking about because I try to talk about the bigger issues surrounding the shows. Like uh, I have one I wanted to talk about with, uh, there's a young man. Uh, who has a, has a wife, and he's addicted to drinking and going to the strip club. So I wanted to talk about that. And I'm also going to do one about Jada Pinkett Smith. Keep an eye out for that shit. That, that, uh, woo-wee! We're going to talk about that. Because that chick is just, she's, Jada Pinkett Smith and Robin, I think the two of them have been separated at birth. Like, I don't know. Like, Jada don't have Robin's eyebrows, but they they starting to look alike. If you know what I mean, because they because they have a way of of uh, always finding fault with somebody else, and, I, and I'll give that little teaser like they because I have some perspective on it. But yeah, like even with yeah, I'm talking about Jovi. You got it, MJC. You right about that, Jovi, Jovi. But the whole thing is is that as I'm watching this. There's so many things that I just wanted to talk about with regard to a lot of these uh, relationships, the, the failings, the issues, the inconsistencies. And just, you know, I think for uh, the, I just want to try to build a community where people can feel like they can go and they, maybe if they're going through some things, they don't necessarily feel like they're alone. Uh, say, YouTube is my time, Mac. I guess my time machine. <laughs> The final super chat. Thank you. I'm such a fan of your content, James. You keep me laughing. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, I just want to try to put out content that everybody can enjoy. Somebody can take something from it. We can have some laughs. We can have some good times and we can support one another because I think that's 90% of what I'm seeing on the show is a direct result of the fact that a lot of these people don't necessarily have support systems in place. And that's that like the lack of support systems is where People who abuse you and mistreat you and misuse and take your relationships for granted. That's where those relationships live. And the idea that you don't have somebody sitting there pulling your coattails and saying, yo, this is not normal. This shit is not okay. Like, Because watching Cody, and like I said, we started this whole thing off talking about Mary and Cody. 
Mary needs somebody in her life to say, Mary, this is not okay. Your husband treating you like this, ignoring you like this, not paying attention to you, fulfilling your needs, treating you as though you're going to live forever so he doesn't have to pay attention to you. Or if something were to happen to the wife that he loves, you, he got you in the back pocket that he can pull you out whenever he's ready. Like you're not a sweater. Don't let this dude keep you in a fucking closet. Like you don't get to, to put you on when, on the warm nights. He want to stay warm. He pull you out cuddle up with you and the moment it get too hot or require too much attention in the closet you go off to the shelf you go bump that you know what i mean you deserve to have more and i think that sometimes you just got to be surrounded you got to surround yourself and associate yourself with people who are of like mind and believe that you are valuable that you deserve more that you deserve to be the person that you are meant to be and that you should have the things that are meant for you. Not everything in the world is meant for you. And you can't have those things that are meant for you. When I look at Mary in this situation, she wants something that isn't meant for her. Cody is not meant for you. Cody is meant for Robin at best. You know what I mean? And, I, and that relationship is a little sketchy to me too. But if I'm going to keep it all the way in stack. Like I said, I would, if I was Cody's friend, I'd tell him, Cody, run. I, got, I, I wish I had my little board hooked up. I got a board I'm trying to put together. And I got the little run thing, run. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would tell Cody that. I would call him every morning, just play that song, run, bro. Because this girl, this woman's gonna rip your back out. She's gonna Mortal Kombat your ass. She's gonna reach in your stomach, rip your spine and your skull out in one move. <laughs> and your wallet's gonna be attached to it. <laughs> Finish him. Flawless victory. <laughs> Robin. Yeah, I'm telling you. Like, it's going to be rough. And I'm here for it. Oh, okay. Emo Rel. James, you're awesome. Thank you. I adore you. You take on reality. Keep preaching and, and raining my, raining my friend. <laughs> I'll keep giving you that HBO special. That, that's what's up. I appreciate the HBO special. And I appreciate all you guys subscribing to the channel. Helping me out, helping to grow the channel, spreading things out and passing the word on. Because like I said, it's important to me to try to give people uh, something to hold on to. Uh, just in closing, I'll give you guys a quick story. I, I, I hope you guys don't mind the story. But um, when I was a younger guy, what really prompted me to do this the, the, the channel was that, like I said, my daughter was watching a lot of the reality shows. My daughter and my wife watched the reality shows. So I'll go down and be like, oh, okay, what y'all watching? Da, da, da. And there were times where I could sit there and I could talk to my daughter about issues and things on the show without having to confront her directly about, you know, what's going on in your life? Who is this person? Who's that person? This what you, da, 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 da. And we could have these conversations about these big ideas and always kind of hit on a point that you have to respect yourself, respect your ideas, respect the things that you want, keep your goals and your dreams in mind, even though you're pursuing the dreams and goals with somebody else. If you get with somebody else and they have dreams and goals, you help them reach their goals, but they should be helping you to reach yours as well. And that's how it started. And it, and what really kind of prompted me to do this channel was the one experience I had. Like I said, I talked to people. I'm a lunatic. I talk to everybody, right? I'm annoying that way. <laughs> but there was uh, one experience I had when I was in college where I met a um, guy who worked for security. And we just talk, like I talked to everybody. So I'm standing there talking to him. And we're having these conversations. Every time I saw him, I would talk to him. And he was a really smart guy. And he told me about how, you know, at one point he was making all this money and he was doing really well. And then, you know, he felt hit really hard times and he lost everything and he's happy now. And so kind of that comeback story. And he gave me some words of wisdom. And he didn't know at the time I needed to hear what he was saying. Uh, but I needed to hear that, get that information. I needed some, it wasn't that, like head on, like this is what you should do with your life. But it was close enough to where I was going through some things. And in our conversation, he had hit a couple points. And I was like, wow, I could apply that to my life. And so that's that's what I'm trying to do here. And hopefully for some people, it's really helping out as far as maybe you're going through some tough times. We can laugh about it. We can joke about it. We can enjoy each other's time together. But if you need to hear something, maybe I or somebody in the uh, chat 
will say something that hits you in a way that it just lands different and helps you get through it. Because that's that's what we all are here for. That like we got to help each other get through this thing called life. Because you know nobody's getting out alive, <laughs> so we, <laughs> we might as well make the most of it together. You know what I mean? All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming out, and it, hopefully you enjoyed my first live. This rings in the first live. We've been going for, oh, a couple of hours now. So I, I'm, I'm sorry I ran you guys. I was long stroking you on some of it. But like I said, keep your eyes open. We're going to run some more of these lives. I'm going to try to do a few lives a week, and I'm going to still try to do uh, some of my normal content where I'll try to tighten up some of the messaging. Hopefully you guys enjoy those videos as well. Thank you so much for spending this evening with us. I appreciate you guys writing so many things. I, it's it's kind of cool, though. To be honest with you, it's kind of cool. I know I'm trying to do multitask and all that, but it's really kind of cool to see the faces of so many people who uh, leave my takes or their takes down below in the uh, comment section for some of the videos and to be able to interact with some of you guys and uh, and see you in real time. Because normally, you know, just as a kind of inside baseball, what happens is when you when you create these videos, you're kind of there ranting to the camera to yourself. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes like you got to get into the process, like at least my process of putting these videos together, where you're, you're saying stuff and you're like, da, 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 and you don't know how it's going to land. <laughs> when you say it, like, okay, well, I guess this might be my last video. <laughs> <laughs> I might be getting canceled. So you put the video out and it's kind of cool. Like, especially with such a, a great response that so many people have been giving me. I appreciate it. I appreciate the words of encouragement where you guys are telling me to keep going and keep trying and keep pushing. You know, I remember some of you guys, I remember when I had like 500 subscribers and I was putting out videos and I'd have like 10 people watch them. <laughs> so it's kind of cool now that people are watching the videos and enjoying them. I appreciate everybody. And like I've always said, I appreciate you choosing to spend your time with me because you could be anywhere in the world. You could be doing anything in the world with anybody else in the world. And you're choosing to spend a little bit of time with me, this most precious resource that we have. And I genuinely appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. My name is James. This has been my take on reality. And I'm out. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a great night. Be safe. We have the uh, holiday. Hopefully everybody enjoy. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to everybody who celebrated. And uh, I know I'm dragging it out because I don't want to let it go. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys. Have a great night. And like I said, I'll see you on the next one, hopefully. I'm out. <laughs>